What is up everybody? My name is KSM and on today's stream, we're going to be talking about how to draw arms from beginner to pro. I'll be going over all the basic shapes, some of the complex structures, and eventually also talking a bit about the anatomy of the arm and also how we will be connecting the arm to the torso. Now, if it's your first time here, welcome into the KSM crew. My name is KSM and I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design. And I also work full time in the anime animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. So if you guys are interested in some free art education or you just want to hang out with my dog who is sleeping over there, make sure to uh, follow on Twitch, subscribe and like the video on YouTube. And I hope you guys enjoy today's video. So I have here this reference of this guy. This is going to be the first one that I wanted to tackle. And I've already started drawing out a little bit of the torso here because today's focus again, isn't going to be about the torso. Uh, we're going to be just kind of, you know, where I'm going to be speed running the torso a little bit so that way we can focus more on the arms but I still did want to draw the torso because I think it's good it's good practice all right so with that being said let me go ahead and draw out the torso really quick just kind of a quick rough uh, rough sketch there and then we will get into drawing out the um, the arms here or actually what I'll do is this um, now that we're in this stage let me actually go in here and I'm going to draw out some of the simplified forms that I that I think of when it comes to drawing the arms. Now, this is going to be super basic, okay, super primitive, uh, basic shapes. But again, this is, I think, a really good way to start because if you can get comfortable drawing out these basic shapes, I think being able to draw some of the more complex shapes will just end up being way, way easier. Um, and so when it comes to drawing, for example, foreshortening or dynamic poses with your arms, which I'm sure you guys have seen before, like maybe if you've seen an anime where um, they had like the car the character reaching forward like this, you guys know what I'm talking about? Put a put an F in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. When you've seen any shot like that where the arms are coming towards the the viewer like this, right? I think if you want to be able to do stuff like that, you got to be able to know how to do it with basic shapes first. Because if you can't even do it with with uh, cylinders and spheres, I'm going to tell you now, it's going to be even harder to do with all the bones and the muscles of the anatomy, right? So before you jump into all the craziness about like, oh yeah, let me let me just draw the crazy hand and this and that. I would say try it out first. See, see what you don't know and what you do know uh, when it comes to... When it comes to the simplified shapes so again we're going to go over all the anatomy today so don't don't worry i'm, I'm going to do all of these diagram stuff with all the forms um but i i want us to start off at that beginner level and work our way up to some of the foundation that leads to something that is a little bit more uh defined and maybe even realistic or arguably realistic uh but yeah welcome in everybody who's coming in here by the way thank you for the follows um m h maite uh, Kitty Pillow. Uh, we also got Poke, the, the zebra. Thank you for the follows. Um, appreciate all of you guys coming in here today. Hopefully you guys are having a good Monday so far. I had a good weekend, um, I would say. I watched The Last of Us, the new Last of Us episode, which obviously I will not spoil. And I also watched Enola Holmes 1 and 2. Um, just randomly decided to watch Enola Holmes. And you know what? It was not bad. For some reason, I didn't want to watch it before because I was like, this looks like a Disney Channel movie. But it was okay. You know, it wasn't a bad movie. I wouldn't say it was my like top favorite mystery movie of all time, but it was it was decent. Watchable, I would say. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was it was okay. Um but anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and skip the hands today. We're going to we're going to do hands on a different day because I think I want to give it its own topic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally just chop off here the hands. So we're just going to keep it at the wrist there and we'll talk about all the wrist bones and stuff. And then let's go ahead and draw the other arm here. Now going on about the simplified forms that I'm using today, as you guys can see, I'm keeping it really, really simple here with just cylinders and spheres. Now the reason why I am using uh, cylinders and spheres is because the um, the the joint of the shoulder first of all has a lot of good mobility um you're able to really rotate your arm in a pretty flexible way and a lot of that has to do with how the socket of that shoulder is kind of um placed in here in between the scapula and the clavicle and all of those components there 
Uh, and so because of that, I think using a sphere is a really good, uh, really good tool. Now, the sphere for the elbow is not as good only because the elbow really only has one hinge that goes this way and this way. A lot of the mobility actually comes from that shoulder being able to rotate, uh, rotate the arm as, as well as the two lower bones there of the wrist also being able to rotate. But the elbow itself really just does this. That's like the only real motion there. So if anything, uh, what's a better primitive shape to use? for something like the um, the elbow there is to actually just use like a hinge. Uh, but, you know, for the sake of simplified forms, I think a sphere will be okay for now. Just keep in mind that arms, um, the, the flexibility here of the elbow is going to be very much re uh, related to how the shoulder and the positioning of the shoulder is going to be, right? So, but okay, so we have here basic simplified shapes, right? Nothing too complicated, I would say. Um, and that's a great question. So somebody in the chat just asked if there is an exact measurement of the arm that I use. And I'll actually talk about that uh, right now. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and do that right here. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Let me just answer a few questions in the chat. Um, what is something that's available on Discord only when he is live? Um, those are the resources. So I have there a few uh, cheat sheets and worksheets are going to be available under the art resources category. I know my commands don't work today, unfortunately. Let me see. Yeah, my, my, my Twitch commands are not working today. But um, if you guys go on my link tree, or if somebody can post a link tree, you'll be able to go to my Discord channel there, and you'll be able to find some of that. Um, let's see here. <laughs> you can't find anything. So if you can't find anything on Discord, it's because you have to read the rules. You got to read the rules first. You know, guys, this is a, this is a, a, there's a, there's a law and an order in society out here. And that includes my server, but also it's because it's a good way to prevent bots from just coming in and joining and causing a mayhem. They got to actively actually read the rules and stuff. But anyways, now that we've drawn in here, the basic shapes, again, talking about, I'll, I'll do it on the side here just to kind of show you to illustrate this, right? So again, we have this sphere and keep in mind that these are these are 3d volumes right so i know that this looks like a circle because it's it is a circle but it's also going to be a sphere here which has some you know volume so i could you can imagine if you draw like the cross contour here right it's going to have some volume there and then also again that cylindrical form here it's going to go down here and then I'll talk a little bit about um, the proportions, which I think earlier somebody asked about, like, how do you get some good proportions in there? Now, this is what I use for general proportions, though, obviously, you don't have to, um, you don't have to use it this way. But what I like to do personally is I like to actually have the distance of the upper arm, um, just that cylindrical section there, roughly be about the same distance as the, uh, the forearm there. So this is not including the shoulder right? Not, the, not including the shoulder bone and also not including the hinge of the elbow here. Because in reality, this humerus bone, which we'll talk about, um, is actually pretty long and it's, it's longer than the, than the forearm bones by roughly about, I think the forearm bones are about three fourths the length of the humerus bone. But I feel like that's so harder, so much harder to think about. Like you're thinking, Okay, like three fourths of the humerus bone. Let me go find the upper arm length. You know, it's just too many, too many math going on, right? We can't math sometimes. So instead, what I like to do is I'm basically um, not including here the volume of the shoulder, not including the volume of the elbow, and I'm say I'm basically saying from here to here, roughly is going to be about the distance from here to here. It's not going to be exact, but it's a good approximation. And I think it works really well for easily drawing in the arms. And so that way, what you can do is, you know, you can slap on the elbow and all of that stuff. And it's, it's a nice little uh, approximation, right? But again, if you want the exact approximations, I would say to look at that cheat sheet that I shared earlier with you guys, because that sheet actually, I think explains, let me go see if it explains it a little better. Um, I think it talks about it. Hmm. It should talk about it somewhere here. I'm not going to try to look for it right now. But if it's not in this sheet, it's in another sheet that I have. Uh, uh, I think it's right here. I think it's this little blurb right here. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's kind of for the more specific stuff. If you guys are going for a more realistic style kind of thing. But if you're trying to go for more just like a cartoony style, semi-realistic animation style, I would say half and half is pretty good. And it's so easy to do because now you can start lining up your arms and seeing where it might feel like that equilateral, or not equilateral, uh, isosceles triangle. So you have here the length of this, again, this section here and matches the length of this section here. Again, not including, right? We're not including the shoulder and not including the elbow there. Um, but hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the chat if, if that was helpful advice. Just things that I've learned and picked up. And again, I always tell you guys, take what I say with a grain of salt because again, um, you know, the things that I cover out here, they might change over time as I progress as an artist and I might find other shortcuts and other uh, techniques that work for me, right? Um, uh, but thank you for the follows, Ra Rafi Deluxe, and also Delor uh, Delorvas, and also On a Yeed Bunny. Welcome in, guys. Uh, I'd love to know how you guys came across my stream today. Okay, but now let's go in, and I'm gonna just work on the anatomy of the torso really quick. I'm just gonna, you know, make it look a little bit nicer so it matches um, the other models that we've drawn here, and then. And then we'll uh, we'll draw out the arms, and I'll kind of slow down a little bit for the arms. All right, so I'll show you guys kind of how I speed run drawing the, the the torso. Now, keep in mind here that even though um, we talked about the shoulder muscles, the deltoids last stream and and last week, I'm going to be talking again about the shoulder muscles in the context now of the arm. But I wanted to add the shoulder muscles last week to the torso because, technically speaking the shoulders also connect to the torso and they're probably one of the big major connectors um the big major connectors there of the arm to the torso right so understanding that portion of it i think will be really good and then now that we're going to be talking more about the arms i'll talk about the role of the shoulder uh in relation to the arm instead of kind of how it was related to the torso right so we're kind of switching it over now and giving more context that way Oh, nice. Yes, uh, that's super cool for those of you who are coming in here and curious about the boot camp. I do have commands, though. Apparently, stream elements is broken today. Uh, but the uh, my boot camp basically is a free boot camp that everybody can join, uh, whether you are watching live on Twitch or you're watching afterwards on YouTube and just following along there. Uh, but it's completely free to join. Um, all, you, all I ask is you follow my you follow my. Uh, my streams and all that stuff and you grab the resources whenever they're available. But the, the, the first boot camp that I'm doing for quote unquote, the winter quarter, which is I'm, I'm trying to make it like school quarters and stuff, um, is going to be focused primarily on the fundamentals of the character design. And so we'll be going over a lot of things like anatomy, uh, simplified shapes, all of that stuff. Uh, first and then and then maybe a little bit later if not in this boot camp maybe the next one we'll go over more stylized design we'll go over things like how to draw different uh, different types of characters maybe how to draw animals um all of that stuff because i know somebody earlier was even asking if i have, if i ever cover drawing animals um i will eventually just not right now because you could imagine there's already so much uh there's already so much content that i'm already covering here Adding even more would just, I think, overwhelm a lot of people, including myself. Um, but how do you join the bootcamp? Yeah, so the best way to join the bootcamp is to, one, join the Discord channel. And then from that Discord channel, you'll be able to grab all the worksheets and cheat sheets that I upload every single time that I'm live on stream. And then I would just recommend either while I'm live or on your own time, practice these sheets out, share them on the Discord channel if you want to get feedback from me or other people in the community who are also following along. And it's just a really fun way to, you know, level up and do it with other people instead of just doing it by yourself too. And um, again, I'll be teaching all these topics as well. And you can watch the videos either live on Twitch or you can watch them uh, when I upload them again on YouTube. So either or is it's really up to you and your schedule, but it's completely free to join. Um, Oh, thank you. Appreciate that, Oren Don. Let me. I realize that my um, my speakers were were on right now, so I like double heard. I double heard things. Uh, but yeah, again, if you guys have any questions about about the boot camp and all of that stuff, just let me know, um, and I will try to clarify that. If not me, other people will hopefully also answer. 
but yeah, I've been I've been doing this for about a year now on Twitch. So I started doing this last year in January, and that one was more impromptu for myself, just to kind of help myself practice and get better as an artist. And I found that a lot of you guys really enjoyed it. And so I wanted to continue it this year. And if anything, I wanted to make it better this year by making it more structured, um, making the content a little bit more refined as well. And, and hopefully giving you guys more practice and exercises to work along with. Because last year, I was kind of just figuring it out because I was mostly focused on things that I wanted to cover. And it still is that way for the most part. But at least now there's a little bit more structure to it. And so you guys can have a better idea of what to expect week to week. So for example, this week, uh, this week we're gonna be primarily focusing on, uh, primarily focusing on the arms, right? So that is gonna be the, the, the thing that we're gonna be talking mostly about as we, as we move into, as we move into the week here on, on stream. Which, by the way, I'd love to know how many of you guys in the chat, put an F in the chat if you guys uh, have ever struggled with drawing arms before. Just kind of curious here to see how many of you guys are, are here struggling and you're like, I need this case sim. Arms, an enigma. Like some arms, easy to do, right? But let's say, how about this? Let me, let me, how many of you guys have tried drawing an arm like this where the arm is raised up like that and you're just like, yo, question mark question mark question mark question mark question mark what the hell is going on here right if that is something you're curious about um we're going to talk about that today right um are there still past worksheets on the discord great question so mint so if you guys want to get access to the past resources um those are only going to be available to my subscribers though so if you guys just want to catch the stuff that I'm covering out here live, that's all free to do. And I always try to upload today's stuff as well as stuff I did from last stream. So for those of you who might have missed it, but if you want access to all of the bootcamp stuff offline and, and whatever, um, those are currently available only to my subscribers because I do want to reward you guys who come out and watch my streams live, but also I want to reward the people who do, you know, subscribe and stuff, but I try to make it as free as possible. So if you want to grab everything, if you want to grab everything free, um, all that I ask is you come out and watch my streams live. And I usually, again, repost some of the stuff that we cover. So that way, if you did miss out on day one or day two or day three, there might come a time where I uh, re-upload those things and stuff. But hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's, a, that's a good question. So right now, again, um, because we're not talking about the torso today, I'm going to be speed running this one just a tad bit for you guys. So that way we can get more time invested here into the arms. Okay. So just give me a quick second. We're almost done here. Um, and I'll, I'll probably clean this, up, clean this one up a little bit more afterwards as well. Um, but hey, thank you for the resub. Uh, Bill Zay Bruno, appreciate the prime sub out here. And thank you for the follows as well. Kulu, uh, Kolu and uh delovar uh delorvas which by oh by the way that reminds me guys we hit 30k we hit 30k followers um last stream on saturday can we get some claps in the chat 30k that is huge on twitch because just last year around the same time last year this month i was at only 10k we barely hit 10k last year so to think that we more than doubled um, our community in a year's time. I feel like that's super awesome. So shout out to shout out to you guys for coming in and, and supporting my streams. Um, uh, also, really quick, I do run ads on my stream every hour, and one's gonna be running uh, right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. They they do help keep my stream as monetarily viable and allow me to do uh, allow me to do what I'm doing out here on on Twitch and on YouTube and all that stuff. So thank you again, guys, for sticking around for the ad breaks. Um, but if you don't want to see any ads, uh, consider subscribing or using a prime sub, but, but either way, I hope to see you guys after, um, right. I forgot my, my commands don't work it's lame. I wanted to, I, I tried to using my, my ad command to let you guys know about the ad break. Ugh, Twitch. <laughs> Why you got to make it so hard on me? Oh, so let me, okay. So I will talk about the anatomy a little bit. Cause I feel like I don't want to, I don't want to. 
Okay, let me ask you guys this. Okay, do you guys, would you guys rather just have me speed run the anatomy of the torso or should you want me to kind of like talk about it as I draw it? Because I can do that, but I don't know. Let me know in the chat. Um, also, I realize you guys can't even share links, but here's my link tree. Oh, dude, I can't. I just, damn, I think only my mods can share the link tree. I don't know if my mods are here right now. I'll talk a little bit about the anatomy as I draw it. So that way it's not just like me drawing random stuff. Can VIP? I think so. Yeah, I think VIP can, um, can share links. Can you try Molly? Uh, hopefully that's not too much to ask. VIP should be able to. Hey, there you go. Shout out to my VIP. Okay, um, but we're going to go in here. So let me go ahead and talk. I guess I'll talk a bit about the um, the muscles and stuff. So when it comes to the pectoral muscles, something that's interesting about the pectoral muscles is that the pecs are actually going to think of it like a fan structure where this upper section is going to kind of overlap the underlying section here. And as we draw out the pectoral muscles, these muscles are actually going to go wrap into and wrap around the um, wrap around the the rib cage there because you got to remember that the that the torso is a rounded structure right so it's actually got a lot of good volume there now again i'm gonna i'm just gonna add some quick volume here for the arm so that way we don't have to draw the rest of the torso um but we'll uh, we'll get into that in a in a quick second um no unfortunately mr manfredi it it does not work because it, uh, it, I realize that I only allow VIP and moderators to share links on my streams. So yeah, it's just to prevent, uh, bots and stuff. So it's okay. Hopefully my, hopefully either my mods or my VIP peeps can just share those links for people. I, I do appreciate that. And I'm sorry that I have to even ask. It's lame. It's lame that, uh, that stream elements is broken today. And thank you for the follow, Raphael. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about the um, the serratus muscles next. That's going to be on the side right here. You can kind of see it actually pretty well on this guy. The serratus muscles are going to be these zigzag patterns that you're going to see interlocking in here uh, with the oblique muscles. So the oblique muscles are going to be the muscles on the side right here. Um, and they're, they're going to intersect with the serratus muscles, which are muscles that originate from the back of the scapula and wrap around the rib cage there and help kind of give some of that form and volume and protection around the rib cage. So, um, yeah. So let's go ahead and add some of those zigzag patterns. And again, you don't have to do it uh, this way. There are so many ways to, to kind of draw them out. Uh, but I like to kind of just add in and denote a few of the lines, but not actually draw all the lines in there. Because I think if you draw too many lines, it can actually distract away from uh, from drawing the from the actual image and instead kind of make it look more like a muscle diagram, right? So I'm going to go ahead and erase even some of these things here because, again, we don't necessarily need all the muscle groups. Just because you can see them doesn't mean you have to uh, denote denote all of them, right? Uh, where did I get those reference images from? Uh, from Pinterest. So usually the only places I'll, I'll go to for reference images are going to be one of two places. It's either going to be DeviantArt uh, because they have a lot of really good stock uh, stock images, not stock images, um, reference images from uh, people who just share their like reference pics and stuff like that. Or they're going to be from uh, from Pinterest where they are like just a nice kind of breadth of different types of things. The only thing that I discourage about Pinterest, if there's anything, um, is that Pinterest, unfortunately, sometimes doesn't do a good job with tagging the people that are that that are in the posts that you see, because oftentimes the stuff you see on Pinterest are reposted, right? So they're reposted art, reposted pictures that people just find and like. And so unfortunately, because of that, sometimes you lose out on who the actual person is and it kind of sucks. Um, in that regard. And so I, I'm always cautious about using Pinterest, um, especially for work. I try not to use Pinterest for work just for legal, uh, legal reasons. Uh, but when it comes to, when it comes to, um, just like stuff like this, I think Pinterest is fine. Good old, uh, good old educational, you know, stuff. All right, so I know this looks super weird because we haven't drawn the arms yet. His, his arms are like missing here. 
and so he feels kind of like he's uh a little like like lacking something you know what i'm saying like why is his torso so ripped and then <laughs> his uh his arms still look like cylinders so we'll get to that in a bit so give me give me a quick second because we're actually going to get to that like probably like right about now actually uh let's see here you got the same gripe yeah yeah it's 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 an, it's one of the unfortunate things like it's cool pinterest is cool because they you know you can find such a huge breadth of resources that maybe you know google isn't as focused on like helping artists and focusing on the aesthetics of what you're searching for google mostly just cares about like hey did we help you find the the words that you're looking for yeah okay cool whereas pinterest is more like hey did we help you find the aesthetic things that you're looking for right and so because of that i think um i think pinterest is a little bit better for searching stuff but yeah but all right let's go in now and let's talk a little bit about arms all right so now we're going to get into the actual arms and we'll focus primarily first on the skeletal anatomy and then i'll talk about the uh, muscular anatomy on top so that's kind of how i want to do it for uh for today all right also thank you for the follows guys Cas uh, casio welcome in and also Raphael earlier so when it comes to drawing the arms um there's going to be i would say three bones three bones of the arms that you need to know and i'll explain them a little bit more as we do more examples but just to kind of name them off here and i'll name them in relation to this pose um you first are going to have here the humerus bone it's going to be kind of this gigantic bone here that ends up kind of being knobby at the top as it connects to the socket here of the uh, uh, that shoulder socket and as it goes down right here it's going to actually hinge a little bit um, it's going to be hard to see here because of his arm his arm is kind of facing this way but it is going to hinge this way and you're going to have two bones that connect to that now again you're not going to see unfortunately you're not going to see all um this one all too well just because of the nature of his pose but you could imagine um what's going on here is you're going to have two bones here one is going to be the ulna which is going to be this bone that hooks here from the back uh the back of the humerus bone and goes all the way here to that wrist okay kind of like that um and what's really cool about the ulna actually is that the ulna bone um is gonna be what what makes the elbow so it's kind of a cool little thing there so it actually makes the elbow here um and so if you're wondering what this elbow bone is it's actually the bone here of your of your lower arm which kind of goes here on the inner side and connects all the way to the pinky side uh the pinky side of your of your uh, of your hand there now again we'll have some other references which i'll show it a little bit better um but just for now know that for this particular pose that's kind of what's going on here and then here we also have another bone which kind of sits um, a little bit to the i think the lower portion there of the humerus so not actually um hooking on the humerus but this one right here is going to be called the radius bone so the radius bone is going to be interesting because it's thinner at the elbow but it widens out and actually makes um the majority there the majority of the volume of the wrist okay whereas the uh, ulna bone is going to be thicker at the elbow and actually becomes thinner at the wrist so these two bones basically are going to work in tandem they're going to be twisting for things called supination and pronation we'll get into that another uh probably on another stream let me go see because i kind of already prepped the other streams for you guys i think I think we're going to be covering pronation and supination on this stream. Uh, so tomorrow's stream, we'll talk about the actual uh, rotation of the wrist and stuff. All right. So for today's today's stream, I primarily just want to focus on the basic shapes, the structures and the anatomy. Tomorrow, we'll get into the actual flexibility and different range of motion um, of the arm. OK, hopefully that's OK with you guys. I'm trying to I'm trying to section it off here so that way you guys don't get overwhelmed um if if you are already overwhelmed i'm sorry but <laughs> i'm trying to i'm trying to make it less overwhelmed for you guys okay here so we have here the the skeletal anatomy uh nice and easy right and i'm not i'm only going to do it on one arm here now i'm going to go in now and let's actually talk a little bit about the anatomy of the arm and particularly we'll start off here with the deltoid muscle now as a quick little recap for you guys the deltoid muscle is really cool because one it connects here to the clavicle about a third of the way here up from the collarbone collarbone equals clavicle there and there's going to be three major sections there of the deltoids 
you have here the front portion uh, posterior you have here this outer portion here the lateral side and then last but not least you have here the anterior side the back side now what's really cool if you pay attention here the the, the deltoid actually inserts into kind of more of the front side of the arm so it's not actually right in the center so if you take a look at this guy's arm here the deltoid isn't like this right notice how it shifts a little bit here and goes this way right the arrow follows this flow right here because it actually inserts closer to the front side of the arm there and locks in more in line with that bicep right here and this brachialis uh right here okay so we'll talk about that in a second but just kind of kind of something to know here is when you're drawing out the gesture of the shoulder this could matter um this could actually help you out a lot and really uh conveying some of that that natural gesture of the arm and even help you with overlaps and forms too. Now, again, if you're a beginner, don't worry too much about, about all that stuff because I know that that can get really complicated really fast and you're just like, huh? Like inserting into the front side, this and that. I would say if you are still a beginner and you're just trying to figure out what the heck is going on, I would say just to imagine the shape of the, um, imagine the shape of the deltoid here as kind of, um, kind of like a cap, like you put it, you're putting a, like a cap here, like a cover on the arm here. And there's usually going to be about four sides, the upper side right here. And then the three sides on each side, which front, middle and back with the back side showing a little bit there. So you'll see a little bit of that. Um, but yeah, so it's, um, it's a very subtle. Yeah. So someone in the chat was saying it's subtle. Um, it's, it's subtle in the sense that it's, it's important to know from, the sake of anatomy, why the arms do that or why the, why the deltoids do that. Um, but let's kind of just go in like that and I'll leave it there. Now, the next muscle that I want to focus on with you guys is going to be, of course, probably the one that a lot of you guys already know, and that's going to be the bicep muscle. Now, the bicep is really interesting because the bicep, uh, by bi meaning two here, actually connects at two points in the, in the upper arm there. One is going to be connecting to, I believe, the uh, coracoid process. Uh, I always forget, but let me double check. It connects to um, not the humerus bone, but a little bit higher up there, I believe, on the coracoid process. Let me see. Um... Yeah, I think so. And then you have the other, the other head of the bicep connecting to the humerus bone. Now, the reason why this is important is because from a gestural standpoint, you can actually use the bicep as an indicator to, to figure out where that arm should be uh, directing to. Because you know that the because you know that the bicep connects to the humerus bone, you know that it'll shoot kind of straight up there. Um, and follow along parallel or not parallel, uh, parallel actually to the, to the rest of the shoulder, right? So that bicep is a good indicator of that form right here. So the bicep also is going to be inserting into, I believe the ulna side. <sighs> this is where the insertions, hold on. Let me see. Bicep inserts into the inner side of the arm, which is the ulna side and the brachialis inserts on the radius side. Yes. Is that right? That sounds about right. I'm double checking for you guys. I don't want to give you guys wrong info. Um, and I'll explain why this is relevant because I think it's, uh, I think this is right. If someone, if someone here, uh, wants to either confirm or deny, let me know. But anyways, the reason why I think it's important is because this actually helps us. It's the opposite. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, if, it's that, if that's the case, then the bicep connects to the radius inner side. I'm going to double check for everybody here. Mm, let's see. You might be right. This is where having those cheat sheets can be very helpful. Okay, let's see. All right, for now, I'm just going to say that both the bicep and the brachialis are going to connect to the lower arm, each one connecting to a uh, one of the lower arm bones there, which is the, ra the radius and the the ulna. Hmm, I thought I had notes on this. Bicep. Okay. Yes. I think, I think, yeah, I think the bicep does connect to the radius. Okay. 
So the bicep inserts straight down into the radius and then the brachialis wraps around and connects to the inner side. Okay. Thank you, Dem. Dem. Uh, appreciate that. Okay, cool. Yes. All right. So let's go ahead and, and in this pose, you're not even going to see it, but I think it's just good to mentally know these things and practice it yourself. Um, but let's go in here and I'm going to lay down now. There's going to be a muscle underneath the bicep. And this muscle is going to be called the brachialis muscle. Now, the reason why this muscle is important is because this muscle actually gives us a lot of the volume uh, for the bicep there because it sits underneath. And so it really kind of pushes up that bicep and gives it um, some of that shape and volume that you might see in a lot more muscular people. Now, when will you ever really see this muscle? Honestly, you're not going to see it too often unless you're seeing a very muscular person and they happen to be flexing this muscle on the outer side. So that's basically this little chunk right here. You see that? Um, what's interesting too about this, uh, this arm muscle, and I, this is not a good reference for it, but what's interesting about it is that the muscle, the brachialis is much larger and more visible on the outer side here. And then you'll kind of see it Let's kind of see it inserting here onto the lower side like that. So it kind of goes in a little bit at an angle um, where you'll see the volume more on the lower side, the lower side there um, from the inner view and more on the outer side here from the outer view. So uh, it kind of goes in diagonal, kind of like what you see in this reference. All right. Also, Vandal, welcome back in. Also, uh, Kiara and also Faru, welcome into the case and crew. Okay, but let's go in and we'll talk about the tricep muscles next. Now, the tricep muscles are going to be inserting in here and wrapping around going this way. And so here's a kind of interesting thing about when it comes to uh, drawing arms. Uh, I think what will help you guys make arms look and feel more believable is understanding how the arm actually works. And in particular, I'm talking about how the arm flexes and stretches. Now, I'm not flexing for the sake of flexing. I'm just more kind of showing you guys that when the when you bring the arm in like this, the muscle that's going to be much larger in volume is going to be that bicep muscle here, right? Whereas the tricep muscle on the back is going to be stretched. So in this pose in particular, he's kind of having an elbow bent. And what's going to happen there is you're going to see more of a curvature, right? More of a curve here on the bicep. Whereas the tricep muscle is going to be a little bit more stretched out. But when you open up that muscle, all right, when you open up that arm, and I think I might have a reference to that. Oh, perfect. This one right here. So notice how when you stretch out your arm, notice how there's a lot more volume right here on the tricep muscle. Uh, that's going to be that back muscle there. That's uh, this one here, right? So uh, knowing how those things work will actually help you establish better contours um, and better gesture for your arm. And so here for this arm uh, that I'm drawing on this side right here, I'm just going to keep it nice and, you know, nice and stretched out a little bit and i'm going to really make this one have more of the volume there and so having that nice rhythm of the you know of the arm and stuff can really help establish a little bit more of the gesture and the flow right all right cool 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 also guys let me know if i am going too fast um i know this is a lot of topics and stuff a lot of names i'm introducing every week to you guys last week we talked all about the torso muscles this week we're talking about uh, arm muscles, right? So let me know if that's, if this is getting a little too much and I will try to slow it down or maybe talk a little bit about each one a, a bit more. Um, and Hey, Cotton Om, welcome in. Also Fuego, Creativo. Thank you for all the follows today. Appreciate everyone coming in here. Um, I realize I haven't even given an intro of myself in a bit of time. So let me go ahead and, and do that one, uh, really quick. Uh, but welcome in everyone who's coming in from uh, on Twitch and stuff. My name is Kasem. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design. And I also currently work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, right now, I'm actually prepping to work as a character designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education here on Twitch, or you guys just like hanging out with my dog who is asleep over there, uh, make sure to leave a follow, join in, and I hope you guys enjoy today's stream. And don't worry, guys, there is uh, there's going to be no test. There's not going to be any surprise pop quizzes on today's stream. So you don't have to pay attention to this, all right? We'll see. I might test you guys later. <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, thank you for the follow, Riasaur, uh, and uh, welcome in everybody who's coming in here. 
appreciate all the new people who are joining in today. Uh, lock you, uh, lock, lock you. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. What about the bot tests? We might do some of that too later too, Mr. Man Freddy. Yeah. There's a lot of activity going on today. And, um, each time we get a new follow here on Twitch, I get a little bit more suspicious about whether or not you guys are bots, but I feel like you guys are okay. I haven't seen any weird bot names. Like sometimes I'll see a name that you just kind of, you can't help but question, right? You can't help but question whether or not they're a bot when they got a name like um, user one three five eight, and you're kind of like, hmm, <laughs> I don't know. Like, are you really a person? Because if you're actually a person, why the heck would you choose? How? Why the heck would you choose that name? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Out of all the names you could have chose, you you chose like a stereotypical. Stereotypical bot name, but uh, anyways, going in here now. So we've drawn here the tricep, and what's really cool about the tricep, and it's a lot harder to see in this reference, um, but what's really cool about the tricep overall is that the tricep muscle basically has three heads. Um, you have here the, I believe, and let me see if I remember this one. Um, you've got three heads of the tricep. Now, what's what's interesting about the three heads is that there's going to be a long head a lateral head meaning outer and then you have there the medial head which is inner now two of the heads you're actually only going to be seeing because the third one kind of tucks underneath the other ones um but what's important here is that you have a, an outer one here which is more teardrop shaped kind of like this and then the inner one um which is called the long head is actually much larger and so you're going to see more of that volume actually right here you can kind of see uh, a little bit of it right here and then what happens is uh, um, these three heads of the muscle that create the tricep actually connect at a tendon and then eventually connect here to the elbow and kind of flatten out here. And so this becomes tendon right here, kind of flattens out. And there you go. So you got this kind of like arm, uh, arm muscle uh, right here. Okay. Now, again, I'm drawing all the diagrams and stuff, but... Um, we'll do some exercises where it's going to be a little bit more loose, a little bit more um, organic looking than all the diagrams that we have here. Because right now this is very diagrammy, right? Which is cool for educational purposes, but for artistic purposes, I think it's kind of eh. It doesn't look as nice. User 42069 is your bestie. 42069. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of you guys know user 42069. <laughs> Wait, who is this model i got no clue sorry it's uh just a just a reference all of these are just references i found but all right let's move on now because we've actually covered we've actually covered the upper arm muscles all right hopefully it's not too overwhelming but now we're going to get into the forearm muscles and the forearm muscle the one that's most important for now is going to be something called the da, 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 ridge muscles, also known as the brachioradialis, as well as another muscle. But I just I just think of it as the ridge muscle here. Now, this muscle or actually originates at the upper arm and connects to the bi uh, connects to the uh, the humerus bone there. But it's in between the bicep, um, brachialis and the tricep. And so it's actually going to be this muscle right here. And what's really cool about this muscle is it basically um, is going to help kind of bridge the gap there for um, how the upper arm connects to the uh, forearm, right? And also this brachialis, uh, brachioradialis, I should say, sorry, uh, ridge muscle actually connects, I believe, to the thumb side here at a tendon to the arm. All right. Nothing personal, just reference. Yeah, I'm just, just using them as reference. I don't know them. I don't know their names. Sorry about that. But uh, let's go ahead here and kind of draw that one out. And then we'll talk a little bit about the actual wrist, uh, not the wrist muscles, the forearm muscles here. Now, out of curiosity, how many of you guys in the chat have ever struggled with drawing uh, the, the, the lower arm here? Maybe you feel like you're... I don't know. It's kind of lacking, right? You don't really know what's going on there. And you're kind of like, it just looks like a cylinder, but I want it to look more defined, right? Put an F in the chat. If you've ever tried to draw your, the forearms here and you're kind of like, mm, it looks kind of basic. 
nothing it just looks like a couple lines right you want to add some of that depth some of that uh that juiciness that makes the you know forearm look like an actual forearm and not just like a tube right you're not just you're not just drawing tubes out here so let's talk about that so one of the first muscles here to call out is actually the extensor muscle and the extensor muscle originates here on the outer side of the um, outer side here of the of the elbow right on the lateral epicondyle there and it's going to be a nice chunk of muscle here that actually creates i would say the um the back side there of your wrist so or the uh, of your forearm so here's the here's the back side of your hand this set of muscle right here um kind of this chunk right here is basically going to be your extensor muscles and its job is to actually i believe its job is to bring the bring the hand back like this and and pull the fingers back like that whereas the other muscles in the inner side the flexors their job is to uh do this is that right because you're flexing your fingers when you do this yeah i think so um but anyways going in here the muscles on the outer side right here they're going to all connect and based off of this pose interestingly enough uh we're actually going to kind of wrap it down this way because his arm is kind of rotated a little so we're going to kind of wrap around there the flexor or the extensor muscles and then we're going to bring in the rest of the the tendon there of the arm right and you can kind of see already just from doing that we already have kind of what looks like a pretty reasonable uh reasonable arm there uh the last couple of things i'm going to add here is going to be that elbow right so we're going to make sure we keep that ulna there that elbow of the uh crater there from the ulna bone all right and then we're going to add just a little bit of volume. You can kind of see that sliver right there. And so that sliver, I believe, is on the other side of the ulna. And that's going to be the extensor muscle. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about all these muscle groups uh, when we have more references and see them better. But just know that there's basically three major muscle groups um, that comprise the forearm. The, the extensors, flexors, and the ridge muscle. Okay. If you can know that, that's basically right here, uh, what we've just drawn, which is going to be this, uh, this arm here. Okay. So let me go ahead and color this one out for you guys. And then I'll clean up, I'll clean this one up a little bit more. So that way we have more of a polished look for this muscular guy that we've got here. All right. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so let's do multiply. All right, so we'll start off here with um, we'll start off here with the the shoulder, the deltoid. All right, there you go, deltoid muscle right here. Uh, next, we'll do biceps, and we'll do that kind of in red and stuff. Um, I've noticed that the wrists don't actually get much wider, even with larger muscle masses. Yeah. And so the, the part of the reason why is because once you get closer to the wrist, most of that is just going to be tendon. Um, it's just going to be the tendon of all the muscles connecting to the, uh, to the wrist there and stuff. And so tendon, unlike, unlike muscle, it's not really going to change that much in volume. Um, so there are ways to increase your muscle mass of your forearm. But predominantly, that's going to be on this uh, two thirds right here of the arm and not this one third of the wrist, um, just because of the nature of how the wrist actually works. Right. So if you want to get bigger wrists, uh, honestly, I'm sure there are maybe ways to do it, but it's not going to be it's not going to be just through like natural means, I feel like. <laughs> and and you're not going to no, maybe maybe there is. But like, I guess what I'm trying to say is this, it's not going to be that big of a difference because again your working majority of it is going to be tendon um make it darker so i'll actually highlight some of the tendons uh the tendinous sections like right here and a little bit of a lighter variation of the of the arm okay Okay, looking good. Let's get into the um, the forearm next. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, hopefully, let me. Um, hopefully, this was helpful to you guys. Let me know in the chat if um, if you did find this helpful so far, and maybe there's more you want to see. Um, again, I'll be going over so many examples of arms and different angles um, across the three streams that I'll be talking about arms. So if you feel like, hey Sam, what about the inner arm? What about the arm at this angle and this and that? Hopefully, I will have a reference. I'll show you guys some of the some of the ones we're gonna be working on. Um, so we're gonna be focusing a day on literally drawing arms. Um, where their where their hands are raised like this. So we're gonna definitely have something like that. We're gonna have days where the where the forearms are at different angles, and then we're gonna have today's stream as well. So, um, again, I, I want to try to break it up into different days so that way it's not like super overwhelming, and you guys are just like, yo, what the heck? It's too much, you know. So we're trying to keep it nice and nice and easy out here today, especially because it's a Monday right you know you know how mondays are guys i feel like man mondays are always rough for me because it's like you have such a good weekend where you do nothing and then you know that you got to wake up the next day and do something and you're just like please can i just can i just have a, a nice three-day weekend can i just do nothing for a little bit also let me go ahead and color the torso out a little bit that'll i think also help establish the silhouette a bit more so give me, let me do that Um, and hey, welcome back in, um, uh, V Ecstasy and stuff. Yeah, we got the resources out on the Discord channel today, so you guys can grab these on the Discord channel. Uh, my commands, unfortunately, don't work today, so you're going to have to um, just check out my link tree uh, here, and you'll find the Discord channel there, as well as a link to my YouTube channel and my Instagram. My YouTube videos, guys, uh, again, I keep saying this, but I want to thank you guys for watching my YouTube videos because... I'm popping off. I'm popping off on YouTube. Um, and I didn't think I would be because the videos I upload there are super long. They're like hour long, two hour, three hour long videos. But apparently, um, apparently people like that. And there is a, there is a community for that. So shout out to you guys, um, for checking those videos out. Okay. There you go. Um, but let's see, am I missing one more muscle? Yes, I'm missing the I'm missing the flexors here on the side, the bottom right here. Woo -wee! And then we have there the elbow. That's gonna be the elbow uh, bone right there. So I'm not gonna draw that one out too much. Uh, thank you for the follows, everybody who's coming in here. Uh, Kaysen, can you please create a glossary of phrases you are using uh, during your lesson? Because I'm not a native English user and some terms can't be recognized by speech. Um, you mean like this? these terms yeah i usually write them out after the first time i draw them um i'll, I'll be i'll be doing some of these uh super helpful i love drawing arms it's always helpful to know nice nice it's a bit advanced to me as a beginner yeah so i know we're talking yeah so again i want to lay out all the all the stuff first and then when we do these other examples here, I'll talk more about some of the more simplified shapes and stuff. So that way it's not as crazy. Um, but again, I would say if you are a beginner, best thing you can do, I kid you guys not, is to practice these basic shapes here. Because if you can do these basic shapes that we're showing you, uh, that I'm showing you right now at different angles and stuff, um, it's only a step further to be able to draw the muscles and forms on top of that, right? So you can, you can kind of work your way, you know, into that complexity and stuff so yeah okay well with that being said let me go ahead and do the, the little uh, glossary thing that you guys are asking for i got you guys covered okay mm, one more so many muscles today. Who would have thought that we were going to cover so many today? I thought I was only covering a little bit, but I guess the arms have a lot more than normal. I'm thinking maybe what I should have done was just do the upper arm. What do you guys think? Was it okay that we covered four arms today? Let me know in the chat if it was like too much. I'm thinking, I'm like, did I, did I cover too much today or is this okay? I've got deltoids here. We got biceps. Uh, brachialis. If I'm spelling these wrong, I apologize. Bra brachy. Brachialis. 
Why does that feel wrong? <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Hold on. I think I'm missing something. I'm missing like an H or something. I feel like, hold on. Brachialis? Second attempt. Yeah, that seems better. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, chat. <laughs> I feel like I'm like this. Some something here looks off. Uh, we got the tricep here. All right. How's it going, Fuwa? Welcome back in. Uh, I'm gonna again. So we have here the uh, brachial radialis, but we're gonna just we're just gonna uh, kind of combine it to become the ridge muscles here, uh, because there's another kind of set of muscle there that is not as important. Um, extensors over here. All right. Extensors. And last but not least, uh, we got here the flexors. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the other the other arm really quick now that we've kind of laid out some of the general terms and we will um, we'll we'll jump into some other references here where you can kind of see the arm from different angles. All right. Uh, but also, let me shout out. Let me shout out Fuwa real quick. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Yo, thank you for the thank you for the for the hunt through the thousand bits. What the heck? How's it going, Romy? Um, what the? Um, guys, if you don't know who Fu Wow is, uh, they're an amazing artist out here on Twitch. Uh, really cool. They make awesome, dope art, and they're pretty nice. Um, some say that they're old. I don't know. Um, Fu Wa. Yeah. All right. Here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna. <laughs> Question mark, question mark. <laughs> some say, yeah, some people, not me. I wouldn't, I would never say that, you know, but some people have said it. Um, all right. Well, before we, before we transition on to doing the other arm here, actually, um, Romy just triggered the, uh, the, the thousand bits channel points reward. So we're going to go ahead and do the, do that, not channel points, sorry. The, uh, the bit points, the bit cheer, cheer bit reward. So let me go ahead, and this is going to be really fun for those of you who've never been here before. Uh, <laughs> don't say, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Um, okay, but here's what we're going to do. All right, so for those of you guys who are here for the first time, um, whenever we hit a thousand bits on my stream, we actually do a little giveaway raffle, which everybody can join in. It's free to join, all right? And there's going to be some prizes that you guys can win, courtesy of myself here. We've gotten winners before in the past, and so uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do this one, all right? So I'll explain how how to join in and all of that stuff in a quick second. So just just uh, give me. Give me a sec as I pull up Nightbot. Nightbot.tv. All right. Uh, what's the best drawing program for someone who's intermediate art currently using Photoshop? I think it's up to you. I know a lot of professionals who use Photoshop. I know professionals who use CSP, professionals uh, who use Procreate. So you can have a good variety. Um, is there another place I can ask at a later time? Mm, good question. On the Discord and just at me on the Discord is probably the best way. Okay, but here's what we're going to do, guys. All right. All you guys got to do right now is basically just uh, type in exclamation mark raffle. All right. Everybody just type in exclamation mark raffle, and you should be able to join in on a raffle. Um, again, this is a prize that you guys can all enter. It's free to join, though. The only thing I will ask is that you guys... Um, if, if you do want to join in, you do have to be following my stream, all right? Because if you're not following my stream, um, the bot is not going to pick it up and stuff, and it's not going to know that you guys are um, that you guys are going to be here, all right? So make sure you're following at the least if you want to join the raffle. And let me show you guys what you guys are playing for today, all right? So let me um, show the wheel real quick. Again, everybody can join in. We got here about 40 people so far who've joined in, so a good number of you guys, but still plenty of room to go. Um, so let's go ahead and see what we got here for today's raffle. So there's a couple of things we've got. All right. So we've got here a scuff drawing that you could redeem from me, get a VIP badge. You can get timed out on my stream, which is my personal favorite. Um, there's also some bootcamp resources, which is a $30 value bundle of all of the things that I taught last year on Twitch 2022. And that's over 140 plus sheets of worksheets and cheat sheets that you guys can grab. Um, there's also one-on-one -on -one mentorship. 
which I would probably say is the most valuable. It's a 30 minute session with myself where you can get access to all the different uh, things that I cover or sorry, you can get access to just to, to my advice and personal advice that I can give you. If you want to look at your portfolio, um, your art, anything really. And you, that, that's kind of a session there. All right. So with that being said, we've got here currently 55 people, 60 people who've joined in just now, guys, again, it's free to join in. Um, thank you for, thank you for the, the, the six months divine. Appreciate that. Again, guys, super easy. Just join in, uh, type in exclamation mark raffle. All right. Um, let's get, let's get this one going and I will spin the wheel in a little bit of time. All right. Are you guys good? Are we, are we good for the raffle? Let, let me here. Let's spin it. All right. Let's spin it and see what you guys are playing for today. All right. Spin the wheel. Pause the music. Let's see what you guys are playing for today. I hope somebody gets timed out. Where did it land? A scuffed drawing. All right. Oh man, I was ready to roast you guys. I wanted to roast you guys. I was, <laughs> I was, I was ready for it. It's okay. All right, here's what we gotta do. It's pretty simple. Okay, here's what we gotta do. Everybody just type in exclamation mark raffle. Okay, everyone just type in exclamation mark raffle. It's not that hard. And I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a three, two, one countdown, and then we will pick somebody. Um, the bot will pick somebody, not me. It'll just pick. Okay. All right, good, good, good. Everybody's having a raffle. Good, good. We've got here currently 70 people now who've joined. That's a lot of people. And I think that's a good, that's a good amount. So here's what we're going to do, guys. Everybody in the chat, just type three. Type in three. Him with the threes. Him with the threes in the chat. Okay, there you go. Okay, three. Let's go do a quick two. We're going to do a two. Him with the twos in the chat. All right, we're going to do three. Twos. You guys, you guys know where this is going. Hit me with the ones in the chat. Ones. Uno. Okay. 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 And then last but not least, hit me with the zeros. Hit me with the zeros in the chat. Everybody zero, 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 zero. All right. Here we go. In three, two, one. Who's the winner today? Paper coffee, paper coffee. You're the winner today. Of the giveaway. You've got 10 seconds to type at KSM in the chat. Just type at KSM. And if I see your message in 10 seconds, you win up oh, easy. All right. There you go. You've, you've, you've won today's, today's uh, giveaway. All right. All you got to do paper coffee is give me a character to draw. All right. Give me a character and we will draw that character for you in, uh, in a minute. A minute's time all right it's your it's your little redemption that you get and it's gonna be i'm gonna try to drive from imagination so yeah give me give me a character hopefully a a character that is like well known you know what i'm saying because if you give me like a random obscure character from some web comic i'm probably not gonna <laughs> i'm probably not gonna know it you know what i'm saying so yeah we'll we'll, we'll do that in a bit Just type it in the chat. Just just type a character's name and uh yeah, that should be it. Not too not too hard. And paper we trust. Yeah, let's let's see what they let's see what they give. I'm kind of curious. But in the meantime, let me let me get back into drawing out the arm here. I'm gonna draw this one out a little bit quicker now that we've drawn out the diagrams and all that stuff. And um Actually, no, we should talk about the muscles here because there's this muscle right here, which we haven't talked about yet. <laughs> so we should talk about that. And there's also, there's also, okay, we'll, we'll talk about them. Um, but yeah, guys, just, um, just type it in, just type it in the chat, the, the character, uh, paper coffee and yeah. And also thank you again. Thank you again. Uh, Romy appreciate you um appreciate you dropping in those 30 not 30 uh sorry thousand bits it's huge so that's a lot of bits to drop in hopefully you're doing well and um also yeah the commands don't work today unfortunately i don't know i don't know why they don't work today so if you guys um, are trying to get access to like my discord and all that stuff um i would say you know what I'm gonna do it on a new layer. Um, I would say to just look at my link tree or look at my description and stuff. 
Arnold as the Terminator? Dude, what the heck? This is... Yo, <laughs> that's so hard. All right, fine. Um, I got this. I got this, guys. All right, we're going to do... We're going to do Arnold. We're going to do the Terminator today. Okay. All right, let's go do that one really quick, guys. Okay, quick little drawing here of... Uh, of the Terminator. Let's see if I can do this one right. Okay. Here we go. You guys ready? Where's the music for this? Wrong button. Oh shoot. We just got a raid. What the heck? Wait, where's the where's the music button? Am I crazy? Oh, it's this one right here. Okay. Uh, but hey, welcome and everybody's coming in from VV Stream. Thank you for the shout out to VV guys. If you guys are, are new here, don't know who VV is, make sure to leave her a follow. She's an incredible artist out here on Twitch. Um, she does a lot of traditional art, super cool. Um, and I highly recommend you check out her streams. How was your stream today, VV? And welcome in everybody who's coming in from VV Stream. Um, if you guys are new here and you're coming from VV Stream, here's a little intro of myself. My name is Kasem. I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I cover everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Um, right now, I'm prepping to work as a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education or you're just looking to hang out with my dog over there, make sure to leave a follow on Twitch, subscribe, and like the video on YouTube and all that stuff. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's stream. All right. But there you go. All right. So today you guys actually came in because we're doing a quick one minute drawing redemption for uh, paper coffee. And they are uh, they redeemed that I draw the Terminator. So I got one minute, guys, to do this one. Let's go ahead and um, hit this one going. Get this one going in uh, three, two, one. All right. This is from imagination. OK, so Terminator, I think he's got a hairline. It's Arnold. So he's got like brows. He's got the eye, the robot eye, right? Damn. Hold on. Does he have a beard? I just know he has an eye, right? So he has kind of like that metal eye. So I'm going to pretend like I'm drawing a socket here. Uh. Damn, dude, I haven't seen Terminator in so long. Okay, you know what I'm going to do is this. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to give him so he's like, he's got that robot eye thing. Okay. I feel like he has this. He has this. How much time? I have 17 seconds. Okay. Can I do this? Is this cheating? This is not cheating, right? Okay. He's muscular. He's, he's got muscles. Yeah, boy. That's hundred percent not cheating. Hey, 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 stop, stop. We drew this in one minute. <laughs> oh, you guys can't even see. Oh no. There you go. My bad. My bad. Okay. There you go. I think we drew Arnold in one minute, but let's go pull up a picture of Terminator, guys. Okay, this is my version of Terminator in one minute. Let us go see. Let us go see if we actually got this one right. All right, Terminator. Take a look at what I drew. I, I, I think this is good. Wow. I actually don't even clown me in the chat, guys. How would you rate this? Out of 10, how would you rate this? Because I'm going to tell you guys right now, the Google pictures are not lying and I'm popping off on the, on the Google pictures. This is like, this is him. This is that guy. I actually drew, I actually drew Terminator. No joke. You guys are trolling me right now. I actually just drew Terminator. Let me pull up a picture. Um, don't even clown me on this. Ready? Look, three. Two. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> tell me this is not. Tell me this is not Terminator. Yo, is this not what I drew? Is this not what I drew? That's actually what I drew. I traced it. I think you guys are right. Look, I think I, I definitely traced it. See? Watch. Okay, look. Take a look at this. And take a look at what I drew. Ready? <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> All right, close enough, close enough. But there you go, guys. That was your redemption. All right, let's go back to the let's go back to the tutorial stuff. All right. Thank you for uh, thank you for that redemption. I skipped drawing. That was a that was a good one. 
Okay, let's let's go back to I'm going to delete this. Let's go back to the arms now. All right. So we're talking about arms today. For those of you who are coming in here for the first time, the tutorial that we're covering is primarily arms today. And so we're going to actually, I'm going I'm to speed run some of the, uh, the muscles we already covered. And then we'll, we'll, we'll continue. You can't tell the difference. That's what I'm saying, man. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's, it's very spot on. Um, and also, um, let's see here. Welcome in, Pixie. How's it going? Is that Aldi brand <laughs> exterminator? Yo, come on. How's it going, Pixie? Let me give you a quick shout out if my mods haven't yet. Um, maybe do a quick shout out for Pixie. Check out Pixie too, guys. Super awesome streamer. Um, they make really, really cool characters with very luscious lips. I need to, I need to, I need to look at your tutorials again on on drawing lips. Um, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna speed run the the arm here. And then that way I can talk about it a little bit more. Okay. Because I think we've got here, we've got a lot to, to cover and I want to make sure we are, we are hitting everything today. Luscious lips. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Okay. But yeah, thank you again for uh, for redeeming that, and thank you guys for joining on the raffle today. We try to do we try to do those raffles, you know, when they come around and stuff because they don't happen often. So for those of you watching on YouTube, I apologize if that was just like you were like, huh, <laughs> what the heck did I just watch? Uh, those raffles come come not too often. So wait, I'll I'll do that on a new layer. I'll shade it on a new layer. Okay. So let's see here. So we've got here the biceps, medial epicondyle. We got here the brachialis on uh, this side right here. We got here some tendinous mass because the uh, because the bicep does kind of bunch up right here, and you'll never actually see the bicep touch uh, that portion there. Uh, then we'll have here the ridge muscles on the on the inner side there, going like that. We got here again the epicondyle. We got here the larger portion of the tricep muscle, particularly the long head. Good old, uh, good old long, long head there. Okay. Tucking in for some skin fat there, the armpits. And okay. So let's go ahead. I kind of sped run through this, and then that way I'll, I'll just highlight all the, the muscles in the diagram. Okay. So let's talk about what's going on here with uh with the arm uh but also welcome in welcome in everybody who's coming in here today thank you for uh for all joining in all right so let's do i'll do it like this let's set this to a multiply layer Hey, Rat Lord, how's it going? Welcome back in too. All right, let's talk about muscles here. So I'm going to use the same colors that we had earlier because uh, makes it makes it easier to understand, I think, hopefully. Um, but let's go in and color out again the bicep muscle. So that bicep is going to be this large volume. And we talked about it earlier about how the bicep here is really going to change shape depending on the um, the positioning of the of the arm. And so in this case right here, the uh, this person is actually flexing. They're flexing their arm, and so you're going to see a large kind of curvature there for the bicep. Underneath the bicep is going to be known as the brachialis, and that's going to go underneath here, and that's going to connect basically into that ulna bone, um, as we talked about earlier, whereas the bicep is going to insert into here, so more of the tendon of the bicep. I'll do it a little bit lighter in color. That's going to insert into kind of in between here as it goes and connects to the radius of the forearm, radius being the bone there. Right. Uh, then right here underneath all of that good stuff is actually going to be the tricep right here. Um, and the tricep is going to, again, connect all the way across like so. Um, there's going to be some tendon there as well. But then here, um, this kind of area right here that I'm kind of filling out, that's actually just going to be the the ulna or not the ulna, um, the humerus bone there known as the medial epicondyle. So I'll highlight that in red. A little bit later but actually now we're going to get introduced to a new muscle which you don't normally see unless the arm is raised like this guy is showing here 
or like uh, this girl is doing here, which we will draw in a bit. Um, this muscle is known as, and we haven't added a color for this one yet, but this color, I'll do it. I'll do a new color. Let's see what color we haven't picked yet. Like a green color, maybe like a dark green. Uh, this is going to be the coracoid, coracoid, cor, coracobrachialis, I believe. And this muscle is going to be this uh, kind of inserting here, uh, this way underneath the the bicep and it's gonna be this triangular muscle here and you can think of what's what's really cool is you can actually think of this muscle uh the tip here is actually going to connect and that point right here to the uh to the end of the elbow there so kind of a nice aligning right here like that um and so there's that right there and then we have everything else we've we, which we've already covered so on this side you'll actually see the flexor muscles a lot more right so this kind of chunk right here is going to be the flexor muscles connecting now from the oops wrong layer uh from the inner elbow there so the medial side there medial epicondyle of the elbow it's going to be a nice uh juicy mass right here and um we'll kind of kind of build in some of that taper now again the rest of this is going to be mostly tendon so i always tell you guys this is going to be mostly tendinous mass both from the uh flexors but also from the extensors on the other side right here too so you'll be seeing a little bit of that on the top side there kind of just coming together and really making some of that portion there of the wrist now the last portion there is going to be the ridge muscle right here so you'll, you'll kind of see how it changes on the inner side there um but that's that's basically the um that's basically the arm i would say so there you go oh and we can't forget the deltoids so the deltoids are going to be oops let me put that in there real quick. Um, put that right here. Ta-da. All right. Um, let's see. We yeah, welcome in everybody. Uh, Mama Dragon, Fish Eye, P99, and everybody else coming in here. Hopefully you guys are doing well. How do I remember all the names? I I don't know, actually. It's weird because I feel like there are things that I'm really bad at remembering, but for some reason, I, I happen to remember the names of the anatomy. I don't know. That's a good question. I'm worried now. Practice. Yeah, let's just, let's just chalk it up to practice. I think that is the safe... The safe answer here, practice. Practice makes perfect and all that whatever stuff that people say. Um... Yeah, yeah, practice. It's not because I'm like a bot or something like that. Definitely not something sus. All right, but let's go ahead and merge all of this one out. Ta-da! We wait. What? What happened to the line art? <laughs> Hello? Okay, that's weird. Ta-da! Ta Ta-da! Oh, because it's on a different layer. Ah, I see. I see. Okay, we'll keep it like this then. All right, cool. All right, guys, so we've done the first diagram. All right, so the first diagram right here, easy peasy. Hopefully this was not too overwhelming uh, for you guys. And if it was, uh, let me know. I can try to clarify some things out here uh, on the stream for you guys. But this is going to be the... Ooh, let's see if I can spell this one right. Uh, Coraco... Uh, Breaky... Alice? Is that right? People in the chat, my uh, my anatomy buffs in the chat? No, I think there's one more. I think it's like Corico, Corico. Damn, I'm just going to look it up, guys. Sorry, hold on. Cor, Cor, yeah, sure. <laughs> Corico Brachialis. Let me see. Corico Brachialis. Oh, yeah, I spelled it right. Hey. Okay, that's good. Cause it's just, I was like, huh? It's such a, it's such a weird name. Again, I always tell you guys, you don't have to know these names, right? So I just want to clarify, you guys don't have to know any of these names. Um, I think what's more important than anything is understanding the shapes and understanding, um, what the muscles do, because I think at the end of the day, we're not, we're not like medical students, right? We're not trying to draw diagrams and stuff. And maybe you are, but I think, you know, and what's more valuable, I think, is understanding the functionality of these muscles and understanding how to then, you know, 
draw your characters in different poses and all that stuff while still retaining that understanding of the anatomy to be able to um to be able to to really create a good representation for the um for the characters that we're drawing but yeah i would say pretty good pretty good so far all right are you guys chilling? You guys are okay? You guys are alive and well? Let's see here. Mike Guy and Rockley are favorite characters? Um, they're good characters. I do like them. I think my favorite character from Naruto probably has to be Guy Sensei. No, I guess sorry, not Guy Sensei. Uh Jiraiya. Jiraiya Sensei. Um, I don't know. He was one of my favorites. I just thought he was so cool. And he didn't take things seriously. Ah, damn. Jiraiya. Oh, shoot. Really quick. Uh, really quick, guys. I do um, I do run ads on my stream. Unfortunately, the command doesn't work, but I do run ads on my stream every hour, guys. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. It does help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. All right. Yeah, Jirai is pretty good. Uh, think of the follow too. Violetta, like the flower, dusky nothing, and everybody else who's here today. All right, well, let's go ahead now and let's work on another, um, another arm here, yeah? Hopefully, I'm not overwhelming you guys. I know this is, uh, this is a lot, <laughs> a lot to take in, so... If you guys do feel overwhelmed, just just know that this is completely normal. It took me probably, I think I had to learn anatomy at least three to four times to really have it actually click in my head and then a few more times to actually use it and not have it feel like I was just drawing muscle diagrams all day, you know? So if you're feeling like, man, KSM, this is, this is a little too much for me. I don't really understand a lot of what's going on right now. That's okay. Um, again, I... I if you are struggling with some of those components, just focus on the um, focus on the general shapes and the volume first, and then eventually over time you'll start getting more and more comfortable with some of the ideas that we're um, talking about right now. Just giving him more of a neck there. Cool, cool, cool. All right. And uh, let me also, I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. Sorry. I know. Let me, let me just clean this one up. <laughs> Make it a little bit more presentable, and then we'll work on drawing uh, this character here, which I think will be a fun one because I think the reason why I chose this reference was to kind of show you guys that even though you might have a muscular character, um, that doesn't mean that you're going to have to see all the different muscle groups, right? So I'm going to show you guys how to draw a character where maybe you don't see a lot of the, you know, the definition of the muscle, but that doesn't mean that she's not muscular, right? You can clearly tell she's pretty muscular. Looks like a pretty strong person. I, I would not want to mess with her if I ever encountered her. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and, and talk about uh, that one in a bit. Just giving him more, more neck volume there. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. All right, so we covered the general structure of the arms. Let's go ahead and move this one a little bit higher up, I guess. Wait, what the heck? Put that in there too. I'm gonna move it here 
And I'm just going to get rid of the reference because we don't need the reference anymore. Um, and then that way we can make room for other stuff. All right. Or actually what I'll do is I'll move it. I'll move it down. Like that. All right. Let's go work on this pose uh, right here. Uh, and hey, welcome in. Thank you for the follow. Shadow Ninja 44. All righty. I don't know what this layer is, but we're just going to close it. Um, by the way, for those of you guys who are coming in just now, um, if you guys do want to follow along, by the way, on my Discord channel, I upload all the resources that you guys are seeing here. Um, so we have today's worksheet um, that you guys can download, follow along if you want to draw and practice along with me here. We have here last streams worksheet that I covered uh, primarily on the side, uh, the side of the torso right here. So we talk about all the muscle groups there. Uh, then I have here this cheat sheet that I made last year in 2022, which actually covers the skeletal and muscular anatomy of the arm muscles. So highly recommend this one, especially if you're still starting out and you're just getting a rough idea of of the placement of all the things all right so those are free to grab on my discord channel but they are only available while i'm live um, on twitch all right so just keep that in mind if you're watching this as a youtube video later or the vod or whatever have you there's a good chance they're probably not going to be there so when i'm live though you'll be able to grab them all right but okay, let's go ahead and draw. Let's go ahead and draw this girl here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of speed run the torso uh, again, mostly because we've already covered the torso in the previous streams. So I'm just gonna kind of draw this one out quickly, really, uh, you know, just for you guys, and then we'll we'll uh, jump into all the other anatomy. Okay, so just a quick little uh, gesture here, quick little forms, and then we'll do. We'll focus primarily on the arms today. And then I will I will come back in and, and draw the maybe the rest of her and stuff too. Right. So just kind of giving her a quick little gesture here. Nothing too uh nothing too crazy. Okay. And if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask, by the way, it doesn't have to be specific to what we're doing today. If you just have general questions about my stream or about me, uh, the community, the boot camp, anything, honestly, uh, feel free to ask in the chat and um, I will do my best to answer it. If it's something that I can answer, uh, there are some times where, you know, people are like, yo, Kaysom, can you tell me, um, can you tell me your social security real quick? Can you tell me the, your address and where you live? Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice try guys yeah yeah i know your tricks um those things i'm obviously not going to answer right but other things yeah we might answer them um as earlier but i think it got pushed it, it's world pokemon day what's your favorite pokemon oh um what's my favorite pokemon uh lucario do lucario man that that dude literally throwing hands he's actually just throwing hands all day every day Lucario is easily my favorite. Um, yeah. Easy, easy question. Not even have to think about it. I already knew off the top of my head. I already knew. I, there's for me, no competition. Um, I like Lucario a lot. Um, let's see. Gang. Oh, Gengar is a good choice. That's so true. Uh, case. Can you tell me the Krabby Patty formula? Yeah, I'll tell you all right now. So the actual secret to the Krabby Patty formula was actually revealed in episode where they actually talked all about all the crazy stuff that they included, like obviously the, the patty meat and all that stuff. And then they included the secret stuff, which is actually even that. And then they also, I think, talked about the liquid they used, which was also. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the secret Krabby Patty formula. I would say it's on episode uh, of SpongeBob. Yeah, check that out. Um, and you'll you'll get the answer to, to the to the secret Krabby Patty formula there. How can I make a good portfolio? Mm. Yeah, so the... So the, the, the secret to, uh, the secret to the getting a good portfolio, honestly, is I think really what, what makes a good portfolio is maybe that the first question, right? So like what even makes a good portfolio? Um, <laughs> where are the lip readers at? Yeah. Oh, thank you for the three months. Appreciate that. Uh, Cowboy Chronic. Thank you for the sub. Um, 
I would say the first question I would ask is what even makes a good portfolio? And so the question or how to answer that question is to look at professionals who already are in the industry and stuff and seeing what they have in their portfolio, right? So if you want to work in the animation industry, let's say you want to work for Castlevania, right? Look at the portfolio of somebody who works at Castlevania and see what they have in their portfolio. If you want to work in the game industry like Riot Games, look at an artist who works at Riot Games and see what they have in their portfolio. Uh, so here's some examples in, in my portfolio if you guys want to see. Um, oh, I don't have the command doesn't work. But if you check on my link tree there, you'll actually find uh, you'll actually find my portfolio also linked there. So you can see what I do. Like, what does a portfolio look like of somebody who works at Powerhouse? Right. Um, but I would say look at that and see what they have. And oftentimes what portfolio is for, for stuff that, you know, for artists that work in the industry and stuff. Um, you're going to find a lot of what they showcase and what I showcase is being able to to tell studios or clients that you're able to do the things that they're asking you to do. I think that's really the biggest thing that a portfolio is supposed to do, right? It's supposed to showcase visually that, hey, all the stuff that you need to get done that you're looking for from someone, an employee, I can do those things. And here are examples of those things that I can do, right? Um, and so from a technical standpoint, like, let's just say if you want to be a character designer, right. And you want to work, um, in the industry, you got to be able to know how to do stuff like character turnarounds, character rotations, um, character expressions, character variations. And so being able to showcase that is very important. Uh, sometimes it's important to showcase different styles because, you know, different studios might change their styles. So you might have a SpongeBob episode or a SpongeBob studio, right? Where they have that particular style. And then if you want to work for Castlevania, the style is very different. It's a very realistic style. So sometimes showing variants can be very uh, valuable as well. So all, all in all to say is, um, you know, look at what other people are doing, study with their uh, approaches, and then try to see where maybe your gaps of knowledge might be, right? Um, uh, but yeah, that's kind of what I would um, say about about that. Hopefully that was helpful. I know it's not like a specific like go to this website and try these this 30 day plan and you can make the best portfolio ever. Like I don't think it's, you know, I think at the end of the day too, um, a good portfolio is also meant to showcase the things that you're interested in, right? Don't just copy other people's portfolios because you're trying to just get a job somewhere. Um, I think genuinely thinking about all the stuff that you care about and adding some of that uniqueness into your um, portfolio, I think will actually take you a long way in, in helping you stand out amongst the swarm of other artists trying to also get jobs and, and show their portfolio around. Yeah, did that, did that answer your question? <laughs> Hopefully it did. Uh, if not, I, I apologize. I'm, I'm trying to... I'm trying my best here, but it's a tough question because it's such a subjective question. And I think it's, it's, it's definitely determined by, um, it's determined by what you think is also, you know, like what you want to do and stuff with your own work. Right. So my thoughts on a good portfolio might vary depending on industry to industry and, and person to person. Very subjective. Uh, the idea of what is considered a good portfolio. Uh, thank you for the follows, uh, Tsuki, Bart Saint, Eggy, and Strong Noob. Got a lot of follows just now. I would love to know for those of you guys who did follow today, um, what brought you guys here? Hello? <laughs> thank you for the follows. So right now, I'm just going to go in and add those simplified forms first. Um, again, showing you guys just how we're going to build up those forms in a bit. Uh, we're going to be, I'm going to be placing in all the anatomy and stuff on top of that. All right. So just hold on for a second. Uh, do it for free by following Kasem. Sell your soul to gain art knowledge or do it for free. Uh, yeah, I mean... Hopefully you guys don't have to sell your soul to improve your skills as an artist. You know, I think, I think just putting in genuine time and effort is honestly can go a pretty long way when it comes to improving your skills. So if you can do that, if you can just, you know, spend the time, put in the hours, um, every week and stuff and, and, and also try to, you know, course correct yourself because sometimes let's be real guys. 
Uh, we've been in those situations. I'm sure you guys have where maybe you're drawing, you're, you're, you're drawing a bunch of stuff every day, right? You feel like you're putting in the effort and stuff, but for some reason you feel like you're not growing, right? You feel like you're plateauing and all that stuff. Also, uh, V thanks for hanging out here. Put an F in the chat. If you guys know what I'm talking about, if you feel like, um, you're like, case I draw so much, and yet I feel like it's, I feel like I'm stuck. What's going on, right? How many of you guys in the chat uh, feel that way sometimes with your, with your art? And so sometimes people give the advice where it's just like, just draw more, right? <laughs> just draw more. That's like the advice I always hear It's just, just do that. But sometimes you do draw a lot and you're kind of wondering like, dude, what's going on? I keep drawing a lot, but it doesn't feel like I'm getting better, right? So like, huh? What am I missing? Right. And then sometimes people start wondering, like, dude, I feel like I haven't done anything in two years. And so you definitely want to course correct yourself and be able to say, like, hey, um, oh, thank you, club. Sheesh. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to ask yourself, like, hey, am I studying the wrong things? Am I am I challenging myself enough? Right. Because oftentimes I find that the problem isn't that you're that you're not drawing enough. It's sometimes that maybe you're just not getting out of your comfort zone, right? You should be learning how to practice drawing, let's say, let's say you let's say you're really good at drawing female characters, right? And you're like, "Oh man, I'm not really improving my art." But you keep drawing only female characters, you're kind of limiting yourself in in a way, right? You get what I'm saying? Like you're you're holding yourself back from actually learning how to do those other things because you get you get nervous or you feel like the art doesn't look as good or or whatever uh, whatever reason um, you might have as to why it, you know, why you stop. But I think that's oftentimes a big thing that I always tell people is if you really want to improve your skills and you want to do it quickly, you have to be able to quickly come to realize that growing and learning is going to be a painful process sometimes. Um, but it is in through those struggles that you really get the opportunity to learn and develop those skills that you maybe never had, right? Um, have you ever caricatured the full figure? Mm, kind of. Yeah, I mean, whenever I'm doing very stylized stuff, stylized anatomy and, and, and all of that stuff, um, I've done a few, um, a few little caricature style things for sure. Yo, thank you for the sub, Zeta. Appreciate that, Zeta Buffin. Um, sheesh. And um, yeah, welcome in. What's a beanie? Um, it's it's a a protective headgear that keeps you warm on on cold days, I guess. A, a beanie. I don't know what the other terms are. Um, the commands are broken, by the way, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, so you got to use you got to use um these right here. You got to use these commands. Yeah, it's broken. I know. It's unfortunate. A huge L. Even the broken commands are broken. Yeah, it's, I don't know what's going on with, uh, with, uh, stream elements today and stuff, but whatever. That's okay. I guess we'll live with it. All right, let me go ahead and I'm just going to, okay, I'm going to simplify this arm, but you guys can imagine there is an arm here and I primarily wanted to draw this pose because I do think drawing poses like this is probably re I think it's probably one of the harder things to do uh when it comes to drawing uh when it comes to drawing the hands you know or drawing the arms sorry in general like how many times have you guys put an f in the chat if you've ever done this before you tried to draw a pose where your character is raising their arm up and when you get to this part right here you're just like yo what is all this right you're just like huh Put an F in the chat if you've ever done that before. I think this is probably one of the harder ones uh, to tackle. In, in, in all honesty, I think so. Um, and I'll explain kind of how it all works. We'll, we'll try to unravel the um, this arm section here, okay? <laughs> Hopefully, I'll make it a little easier to understand. Though, again, even, even when you see it, it still feels sometimes like it's still super crazy. So... I will, I will break it down, but again, keep in mind that it's, um, it's still going to be hard. So no matter, no matter how many times you practice these things, it's just generally a, a more complex, 
part of the uh, the muscle and the body, and a lot of it again has to do with overlaps and, and all of that stuff. Okay, but let's go in now and um, let's talk about let's talk about some arms. All right, I I intentionally left it. Uh, blank for you guys so we can we can go over it a little bit more here Cool, let's do it on oh, let's let's add both so we're gonna add this little form right here Right and again, these are just simplified forms that I'm using but you don't have to do these simplified forms You can do whatever thing um, You feel like represents that arm the best, but I'm gonna use this one. I think it's a pretty solid uh, approach there for drawing arms and stuff so Okay, cool. Um, have I ever drawn from life? Yeah, I do it all the time. Um, I'll show you guys some stuff that I've drawn really quick from life. Um, so these were, sometimes I go to drink and draws and stuff and they have models, live models who are there. Um, so I draw them out. These are like five minute, uh, I believe these are five minute faces. And then these were 10 minute, uh, 10 minute drawings and stuff. So I, I do those from life and stuff. I think those are really fun um, in general to do. Yeah. Kirkle Brachialis. Yeah, we'll talk about that for sure. Um, <laughs> coming from an armpit enthusiast. Yeah, you might be. You Yeah, if you're an armpit enthusiast, this might, this might be easy for you. Um, but let's see here. How many hours a day do I draw? Mm, 12 hours a day. But again, a lot of that is because I work, right? So keep in mind, guys, that I, I do studio work. So it's not like... People are like, whoa, that's crazy. You draw 12 hours, but it's like, eh, it's like, it's like, it's like I work. So <laughs> I'm getting paid to draw. Um, so I do about, I do about 12 or eight hours for studio work. And then I do about, um, I do about four hours of personal or stream work and stuff. Yeah. So it's a lot of, it's a good amount of time. How do your hands not hurt? Um, I think a lot of it honestly has to do with the fact that I don't really press too hard on my, um, I don't press too hard on my, on my screen and on my, on my stylus. And also I think my posture is really like, I, I care a lot about my ergonomics. So I make sure my arms and my, my wrist and my shoulder and all of that stuff is in a reasonably good position so that I'm not just, you know, wrecking myself there. But that's a good question. Um, I think again, it's a it's a common it's a common thing to to get injuries and stuff. So I'd always say take breaks. I I also take breaks. It's not like I'm just some crazy, you know. I'm drawing twelve hours straight nonstop, and I just sit there. I do take breaks for food, and you know, I walk around and and all of that stuff, right? So do I do some hand exercises sometimes? So there's some ones where you can stretch this way. Uh, you can go like this, kind of like this, rotate your hands and all of that stuff. I think those are some good, um, some good exercises you can do. Uh, these are in my discord. Mm, these are going to be, some of these are on the discord channel right now. Yes. Yes, they are. Your hand starts to hurt after four to five hours. Yeah. I would definitely say, you know, take breaks and you know, um, I think it, it also depends on, on what you're working on too. So. I would say the stuff I'm working on is not super ex extensive to the point where um, to the point where it's really exhausting. But let me go see if I have um, if we can talk about this muscle section right, right real quick because I think this is an interesting one. And again, she's not a super uh, muscular person. So keep that in mind when you're drawing these things out. But we're going to be kind of piecing in all the forms here. You can kind of already see how uh, slowly but surely we're coming together here um, on this figure, right?
Oh, I get to talk about, okay, so I'll talk about the two inner, um, the two inner muscles there of the tricep. Yee, I'll talk about that in a bit. Sorry, right now I'm just, I'm just laying them out for you guys. I want to lay it out first and then we'll talk about the muscle group. So that way it's, uh, a little bit easier instead of me just doing it as I go. Cause I realized when we did it for this one right here, it might've been a little bit confusing without all the terms and the names and stuff that we got. Right. Um, let me see here. I, I draw a lot from life, but I guess, should I draw 12 hours to get anywhere? Oh no, I don't think so. Um, so fun fact for those of you guys who are coming in, uh, before I became a professional artist and was working for studios and stuff, I used to be a software engineer. And back then I only had maybe about an hour at most, maybe two hours a day to draw. And so that was all the time that I had and all the time I was even willing to do given, you know, how much energy I had and stuff. And so I would say, even if you can just draw for a little bit of time every day, I actually think that is more valuable than, you know, trying to draw multiple hours and then doing, getting nothing from it. Right. I think at the end of the day, getting like 10 minutes of good practice is always way more valuable than just trying to do 12 hours of a whole lot of nothing. So I don't think you need 12 hours to draw. Again, I do 12 hours because that's what I do for work. Um, so it's like kind of, it's just like what I need to do, not necessarily what I, what I want to do though. Honestly, I'd probably still draw for that much time anyways, because I do like drawing and, um, it's what I do for a living. So Okay. Cool. All right. So we've drawn out here this arm. Whew, that's a tough one. This is a tough, again, it's a tough arm to, to tackle. So don't feel like if you feel like you're struggling with this, just, just know now that it's, it's difficult. All right. It's, 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 it's going to be difficult. It's, it's always been difficult. So it's completely fine. Um, but I want to see if I can show you guys a quick, like I'm trying to see if I have it on my cheat sheet, an example of the arm raise. I don't know if I do, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay. All right. So let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about this section right here. All right. Okay. Muscles, muscles, muscles. Boy, oh boy. Do we, do we love muscles? Um, let's see here. I've been drawing caricatures for over, uh, for, for years. People always ask that question. How do your hands not hurt? I've never had them hurt for long hours of drawings. My butt hurts first when drawing before my hands. Yeah. And I think a lot of it has to do with ergonomics, right? And I think um, part of the reason why I would say my, maybe my arms don't hurt as much now, I think a lot of it honestly has to do with the fact that back when I was a traditional artist, I had a lot of pain. I'm not going to lie. I had a lot of pain because I was gripping my hand. I was given my, um, I was given my, my, my pencil that grip of death, right? I'm sure some of you guys know what I'm talking about when you're really, really gripping, uh, really gripping that pencil. Put an F in the chat, actually, if you guys are heavy handed artists, maybe you're gripping that pencil tight, maybe you're drawing uh, pretty difficult and stuff, right? So if that is something you struggle with, right? I think one of the best things you can do if you're a digital artist, honestly, is you can try to minimize the, um, you can try to change your pencil curves uh, settings. So I'll show that really quick. Uh, Here's my, here's my pressure curve settings. You can kind of change it that way to kind of make it a little bit easier on yourself to, you know, be able to, uh, not have to press so hard and stuff. Right. But okay, let's go in here and, um, we'll wrap up this arm here before we move into the other, uh, example that I have. So there's a, there's a few kind of like examples that I have in here. Okay. All right. So 
really quick, let's talk about the arms and what the heck is going on here. Now, again, obviously, you're not going to see a lot of the reference or the lines here, but um, I'm going to kind of highlight them for you guys to kind of show them to show you where they are. And that way we'll be able to draw them. And somebody in the chat was asking, um, <laughs> asking why I chose this reference today. The reason why I chose this reference today, guys, was because I, um, I wanted to show you guys what it looks like to draw a muscular character even though you don't really see a lot of the muscles, right? Because oftentimes when people think muscular characters, they're thinking something like this, right? Very muscular. You see all the lines and definitions, but not every character is going to be like that, but they are still going to look and feel muscular. And so what's going on here? How can we capture that, that, that uh, muscular form? Um, even though we're not adding in all these muscle details, which I will be erasing eventually. Right. So that's kind of the reason why I chose this one. But also I think she's a cool, she's a cool person. She's got, she's got a, a good energy to her. And I, I just thought she'd be a cool reference to use in general as well. Um, do you think there's an element of talent to drawing or can you be hindered just by not practicing efficiently? I think the answer is yes to both. I think there are, there is an initial talent that people can have and an, an initial aptitude for being able to draw and understand concepts quicker. Uh, but at the end of the day, talent only gets you as far as you're willing to put time in. If you're talented, but have no time that you want to put in, it's not going to take you anywhere, right? Because at the end of the day, what will actually give you a career and actually elevate your art is not going to be talent. It's going to be skill. It's going to be practice. And so I think, I think if there's anything that's going to hinder people, it's going to be the fact that maybe you're not drawing as much anymore. Like put an F in the chat. Oh, here's a good one. Put an F in the chat, guys. If you've ever felt this way where you were like, man, I used to be so into drawing when I was younger. I used to be, I felt like I was so much better. Now I'm like not really drawing as much, right? Put an F in the chat if that's ever been you. I feel like that was me for a while. When I was younger, I'd be like, oh yeah, I used to draw so much, but now I'm like so busy with this and that, you know, right? When I was younger, people would always be like, wow, you're so talented. You know how to draw a dog and a smiley face and right. <laughs> like all of these things. Um, and then it's like, if you don't practice any of those skills, they, they go away. And, and, um, at the end of the day, I always think putting in the, putting in the hours, putting in the effort is going to be way, way, way more valuable than, um, just relying on your talent and skill to carry you because I don't know. That's, that's just my, my personal take, but I could be wrong here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid my engineering job will consume and won't let me make a career change. I understand. I've, I've been there. Um, and thank you for the follow GH CAG and Kurion and Haveria and Alo Dasha and it's Nava Josh. What are so many follows today? I got no clue what's going on. Uh, but thank you guys. Thank you for all the follows. I do appreciate them. Um, okay, let's talk about, sorry, I'm just cleaning up here, um, all the little areas because I wanted to, I wanted to make this look a little bit nicer. I kind of sped run the torso, so I apologize if the torso is not like super, super good today. It's because I'm not really focusing on torso today. You know what I'm saying? Like today is, uh, today is primarily um, arm day, very much arm day. All right, let's go talk about the arms. All right, let's go highlight some of the, um, some of the features here. So we have here the arm that we've got, right? So we drew in here the arm easy peasy. Let's go in now and let's also talk a bit about, um, let's talk about the muscles now. What are the muscles that we're seeing here? Um, uh, because as you guys can kind of see, we kind of covered it here. But now we're going to be seeing more of that coracobrachialis and we're going to be seeing what, what the heck is going on um, with the with the actual armpit. Because I think the armpit is a very interesting part of the of the body. It's such a weird enigma because it sits in between the front side of the torso, the back side of the torso. And then it also it also encompasses the arm muscles that intersect into it, you know, but we don't normally see all those muscles to begin with. Um, Oh, thank you for, thank you for the prime sub, Yumi. Like, unless you're maybe like an armpit enthusiast or something, and you're really staring at armpits all day, we don't normally see the armpit, uh, the armpit area all too often, right? Usually it's closed in like this, right? Or maybe you wave really quick. 
Um, but usually clothing or something covers this area of the body as opposed to something like the bicep and the tricep. Like people know the bicep and the tricep, you know, but armpits, that's a very vague section. So yeah, we'll talk about that right now. So I drew a bunch of lines there and some of it might be confusing to you guys. <laughs> Okay. How's it going, long arm? All righty, let's talk about the arm here. Um, okay. So, should we do a pop quiz? I think we should do a pop quiz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna bully you guys all right pop quiz pop quiz time here we go you guys should know this from last week okay if you guys don't remember from last week you're goofing um here we go first muscle what is this muscle yeah grab your scantrons if you're not grabbing your scantrons you messed up you done goofed huh wait wait what hold on sorry all right what is this muscle right here Chat, type it in the chat. Yeah. What is a Scantron? <laughs> it's a it's a test thing. I don't know if it's like a standard thing. It's like a US thing. Correct. Pectoral muscles. Good job, guys. Okay. Good job. All right. What is this muscle right here, guys? What is this muscle right here? <laughs> no, it's not the testicle. It's I mean, maybe it's where your testicles are, but no, this is not the testicle. This is the deltoids, correct? <laughs> All right, next up, I'm giving you guys some easy ones here, okay? These are, I'm giving you guys freebies out here. Uh, I mean, you, you can probably tell from the colors I'm picking. Okay. What is this muscle right here? Hold on. This is, this is like cheating. This is actually cheating. Let me, okay, you guys can just see what I'm picking the colors from. Okay, I'll do it after. What is this color right here? <laughs> Or what is this? What is this one right here? Biceps. Okay, good. Uh, what about what about this one right here? Triceps. Okay, you guys are good. You guys are good. Let me. Let me I'm gonna color it after. Okay, so that way you guys can't cheat, bro. All right. Um, what about this one right here? Uh, it's a little bit more like this actually. Let me fix that. The one I just colored in green. I'll, I'll clean it up a little bit more. Yeah, break. It's the brachialis. It's uh, it's um, the muscle underneath the bicep. Correct. Good job, guys. You guys are killing this. Wait a minute. At this point, I feel like I don't even need a cover. Dude, do I even do I even need to cover um <laughs> arms and stuff? I feel like you guys are chilling out here. You guys are you guys are killing it with uh with the arms and stuff. You guys know it. Okay. Um what about I'm gonna do it in reverse order so you guys can't see. What about this one right here? What is this? Yo, you guys are killing it. What the heck? Yeah, I'm actually genuinely surprised. You guys are above and beyond today. Yeah, Corco. What the heck? Okay. Yo, what the chat is actually on top of things today. Uh, really quick. I want to fix this one up because I feel like it's, uh, it's not right. Okay, a little, bit, a little bit, a little bit more accurate, I think. Okay, so let me hold on. Let me let me color some of these. I think we we we've already gone so far. Uh, Brachialis. I did it in reverse, so you guys can't see the, the the words I'm I'm coloring in. Oops. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you guys are pretty much good there. So we've done all the upper arm stuff. I'll throw you guys here. I'll give you guys a a, a tricky one. This one, this one is not in the diagrams today, okay? 
I'll do this one in red. What color? Okay, what is this? Let's see if you guys know this one. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you guys got it. Terrace Major. No, it's not a tumor. <laughs> it's not a tumor. Um, this is the Terrace Major. Yeah, it's the one in red. Terrace Major. Uh, and then last but not least, over here on the arm, we're going to have... Um... Good job, guys. I'm very proud of you guys. You guys are actually killing it. What the heck? Uh, this is going to be the, the lap muscles that just kind of connect like this. Okay. Who's the model? I don't know. <laughs> what is this? This is this is the lats. This is the lat muscle. Okay. And then all of this in here is basically just like tendon and fat and stuff for the armpit. Okay. So don't worry too much about that. That's just concavity. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's do now. Okay, so we have here the elbow, all of that stuff. I'll just color in the forearms for you guys. Again, you guys are, you guys did a pretty good job there. So again, the forearm muscles are going to be connecting to the medial epicondyle, which is going to be right here. It's going to fill up all of this, all of this stuff right here on the inner side. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, and then I believe um, because we're seeing the pinky there. This upper portion right here is actually going to be the, the extensors like that. Okay. But there you go. Muscles. Not bad. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Okay. <laughs> Difficult, I know. Um, but I think, I think once you kind of understand it a little bit better, um, it starts to make a little bit more sense, right? Now, again, keep in mind that um, you're not going to see all these muscle groups all the time, right? Especially with this reference right here. Like if I were to draw out this reference, I probably wouldn't draw all these muscles. I might draw maybe the coracobrachialis. Um, I might draw, I'll definitely draw this armpit right here, kind of this armpit pocket and maybe add a little bit of a line right here. Um, and I might draw a little bit of a line right here for the tricep overlap there of the, um, of the arm and stuff. But other than that, um, I feel like that's, that's really going to be it. Like, yeah, maybe if you're going to render as well, maybe knowing some of these components and volumes and intersections, like I might add in here, the volume of the, the bicep, right? So just kind of keep that in mind that you don't have to know all of these things to, I think, make a successful drawing. Uh, but knowing, I think more of the overall shapes and forms, I think is actually going to be way, way more beneficial. And so part of what I'm talking about here is um let me actually correct this a little bit more um a part of what i'm talking about here is going to be for example adding in um adding in the volume here of how the arm bends is going to be i think a very key part of understanding how the arm works right so here because the arm is flexed you're going to have that bicep curving this way and the tricep is going to stretch this way right so more stretching right more stretching right there so stretch and then flex, right? So as long as you're having these kind of contrasting rhythms, I think that's actually going to be more uh, beneficial. So right here, we'll have, I'll kind of do it a little bit cleaner. So like this, like that. Uh, and then notice how like you can kind of see the, the asymmetrical rhythms there too. So you have here like a nice curvature here of the, of the um, arm, but then it kind of straightens out this way. Right. Uh, and then here you have like a very defined kind of curvature here. Followed by a little bit of overlap here for the shoulder. So I would say, guys, for those of you who are practicing and stuff, remember that you don't have to draw every muscle group. Right. Just focus on some of the overall shapes. And I think that's more important, too. And also focusing on the overlaps as well. So um, maybe I should do this on a different like diagram or section, but. True. If you guys, if you guys want to pass my test though, yes. Um, 
<laughs> then yeah, you might need to know all of that stuff. Yeah, the extensor digitorum, there's all of that stuff. There's so many on the on the forearms and stuff. Yeah, I would say one of the best things you can do, again, that's a great, that's a great call out, is uh, focus more on the simple shapes, right? Because, um, especially if you're a beginner, I would say focusing on those simple shapes is going to pay off a lot more than knowing all the names because just because you know the names doesn't mean that it's, you know, going to make your drawings better, right? But cool. I think this is looking good. Let me color this one out and then we're going to do a fun example. And by fun, I actually, it's a, it's actually a fun example. Okay. I'm not trolling here. Um, it'll be a fun example. I'm going to show you guys in a quick second. Uh, but let me just kind of fill out her, um, clothing here. Uh, and thank you for the prime sub, uh, the, the Sali. Uh, appreciate that. Or the Sali. Um, Ariel Olive Olivetti. Okay, I'll check. I'll I'll take a look at them. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of really good artists who do some really cool anatomical stuff. Um, there is, I think his name is Dylan. Uh, Dylan Chon Chonchu. I always forgot to say his name. Um, but he makes some really nice, um, anatomical forms that are also really gestural, which I think is like, um, I think that's kind of what I always want to try to strive for is like, how do you make something that feels still well-structured, but also come to life? Um, yeah. Thank you. Nine, nine eek. Um, and thank you, Yumi, for coming out here. Uh, Kasem, okay, how did you learn art? Uh, so fun fact I, I went to art school very, very long ago. Like, yeah, very, very long ago. Um, but I dropped out of art school um, after my first semester because I couldn't afford it. And then after dropping out, I was just so upset about not being able to pay for classes in art school that I decided to not do art anymore. Uh, got a degree in computer science. And then I became a software engineer. And then I worked as a software engineer for basically uh, five years. Which university? Oh, um, I went to uh, Art Center in Pasadena. So shout out to my fellow. I don't even know if I can say alumni because that's like I I didn't graduate from there. <laughs> so like it's like you know I, I I wouldn't call myself an alumni at all. Um, but yeah, I went to you know I I got a degree in computer science, worked as an engineer for five years, and then after all of that, when I decided to want to do art again, uh, a large majority of what I did was self taught. So I either read books, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos, um, I, I went to figure drawing sessions, stuff like that. And I just kept practicing and, you know, trying to improve my skills. And then after I started getting more work and was actually doing things a little bit more professionally as an artist, that was that it was only until then that I was actually paying, um, paying for art classes and stuff like that. And I wasn't paying for the introductory beginner stuff because I always tell you guys, all the stuff that I cover for you guys right here, like all the anatomy and all the, you know, fundamentals of art, you can, you can find these for free. There are so many resources online, um, not just my stream that you can learn all these things for free. So, um, don't pay for, don't pay for something if you feel like you don't have the money for it. Like if you have, if you have, you know, like, um, disposable income and you want to take a class on it and stuff, sure. Why not? But if you're, you know, if you're kind of tight on a budget, but you still want to learn and improve, just know that a lot of these things are free to, to find. You just got to know where to look. Right. Um, but the stuff I was paying for was much more later in my career, uh, more specific stuff to the industry that I felt like a 10 minute YouTube video, uh, a 10 minute YouTube video wasn't going to tell me, right? Because those YouTube videos, they're good at telling the fundamentals, but when it gets to more high level conceptual stuff, there's not a lot of videos on that because they're not popular on YouTube, right? There's not a lot of people looking for specific tutorials on stuff. They're looking more for the general, hey, how do you draw a face or three mistakes not to make, you know, three, three mistakes every beginner makes and all that stuff. Um, am I on YouTube? Yes, I'm actually on YouTube. I've been doing really well on YouTube. So shout out to my, to my YouTube viewers. Um, all right. My command doesn't work. Ugh, so annoying. Uh, click on, click on my link tree and you will see the, you'll see all my links there. Uh, one of which is my YouTube channel. Um, but just a heads up, my YouTube channel is long videos, so they're not short videos. Um, so if you guys are into, 
uh, like three hour long videos. Um, that's what I have. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know. So some people don't like that stuff. And so I always try to give a heads up, like, just so you know, my videos are long and um, I know not everyone likes that. So, yeah. Okay. Um, but let's see if I didn't miss any questions. How did you get back into art with that being the case? Um, I think one of the most important things that helped me get back into art uh, was honestly just trying to have fun again. You know, just trying to have fun with art and figuring out why I even drew in the first place. Like what got me interested in art in the first place? Because I think in the process of being an artist and stuff and getting overwhelmed by social media, sometimes you forget why you even did art and you lose part of that. And it becomes more of you becomes more stress than anything. Right. Mm. Mm. Truth. I appreciate that. Uh, Zeta. Thank you for the hundred bits, by the way. Huh? Why did I do it twice? <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, thanks for dropping the YouTube link. Appreciate that. Um, how long have I been doing realism? Mm, I think I've been doing kind of more like the realistic and studies and stuff for about two years. So just a heads up, guys. Um, I, I haven't been working in the industry for too long, um, which, by the way, I should probably do an intro in a bit. But okay, we've got one more diagram here that I want to go over with you guys. And I think this is a juicy one. Or actually, you know what? Let's keep this for YouTube too. I think I think my YouTube viewers, you guys will probably find this one helpful. Let's go ahead and do this one too. All right. We're going to go ahead and do this one here. There's going to be a fun pose where you can really see some more of the muscle groups, but now from the outer side or the back side. All right. So we'll do this one. Uh, we'll do this one right now, but I'll try to speed up a little bit because I... Um, I want to make sure I have enough time to, to lock this one in. All right, guys. What the? Hey. All right. Is that me? Yeah. <laughs> Actually me. <laughs> I took a picture of myself. No, no, no. I wish. Um, what's the best way to do this? Maybe I put it on top like this. Or no, you know what? I'll put, I'll put, um... I'll put this one, this female drawing right here. There you go. Cool. Yeah, but we're doing a lot today. We're covering so many different shapes and stuff. All right. Um, and hey, thanks for the follows. Tea Time, Droan, Guyu Studio, Sat, uh, Satsuki Bay. A lot of follows just now. Are you guys bots? Hello? I'm a little suspicious, but... Thank you for, thank you for the follows. I appreciate that. Oh shoot. Okay. Hold on. This is okay. This is too many follows now. This is actually too many follows. All right. Here's what we're going to do guys. First of all, thank you for the follows, but statistically speaking, whenever we get a lot of follows like this, there's a good chance that one out of every three of you who follow my channel right now, you might just be a bot. Okay, I don't know. So we're going to do a quick check. Yeah, look at this. Not a bot. That's exactly what a bot would say. Look at that, guys. Tea time drone. I don't know. Seems like a bot activity. So here's what we're going to do, guys. I want you guys to type in the chat. I'm a bot. All right. Why do we keep getting follows? <laughs> Everybody type I'm a bot in the chat. And the reason why I'm going to say I'm a bot is because if you were really a bot, it's against your program to say I'm a bot. You know, you can't actually type I'm a bot because a real bot won't be able to, right? But also, also, um, clearly, if you guys are not bots, the last person who does type I'm a bot might actually be a bot because they cracked the code. So everybody type I'm a bot in the chat really quick. I'm just going to do a quick little check because we got a lot of follows just now. Like we got like 10, 10 follows just now. Oh, we keep getting follows. I'm sus I'm suspicious. I'm very suspicious. Why don't we keep getting follow? I'm a bot. I'm a bot. Uh-huh. See? There it is. I'm a bot. Perfect. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to screenshot all of this. All right? And uh, I'm going to make sure to send this over to Twitch to let them know that all of you guys right here who got screenshotted are sus. Get banned, bro. Because you guys know. Uh, you guys know. We're, we're cleaning up the bots out here. I'm kidding, by the way. Well, <laughs> welcome in, everyone who's coming into the KSM crew. Totally kidding. Um, 
hopefully you guys um hopefully you guys enjoy the stream and even if you guys are bots um i hope you guys enjoy uh today's stream so far dance party break um we'll do one during the ad break outplayed yeah we we got them we got all the bots out here twitch you can thank me later <laughs> thank me later twitch all right let's go do let's go do one uh one more diagram here guys and what i'm gonna do is i'm actually just gonna take i'm gonna speed things up because i want to make sure we have time to to knock this one out so i'm gonna take this one right here that we've already drawn um and i'm just gonna use it for the most part here and so that way we'll focus primarily on the arms okay so um uh, this will just save me a little bit of time today and that way we don't have to redraw this whole back uh, that we've got here but i will draw the arm so don't don't worry about that we will we will for sure uh redraw this whole arm section right here okay here we go ligma come on ligma guys that's that's like 20 that's like 2018 <sighs> not the ligma stuff you guys are killing me here um shoulders look like a map of alaska i you know i i wouldn't know i've never i've never been curious to look up alaska but maybe all right so let me show you guys how i would draw this if i'm not going to do the simplified forms right so i've shown you guys how to break down using the simplified forms uh, but right now i'll show you guys just really quick how i do this if i was just to like, draw this one out myself Right. So really quick, I'm just going in and establishing some rough kind of shapes here for the arms. And I'll show you a gestural technique that we're going to be doing. Um, is this a teaching stream? Yes, this is a teaching stream, guys. This is an educational art stream. Uh, let me give myself a quick intro so that way you guys know what you're getting into if you just followed me. Um, welcome into the Kasem crew. My name is Kasem. I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, character design, and all of those things. And I also currently work full time in the animation industry for the studio uh, that made Castlevania. So if you guys are interested, I'm also currently prepping to work as a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested, leave a follow, join in. Um, uh, if you're watching from YouTube, subscribe and like the video and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's um, that's a little bit about me. But I teach on Twitch. That's that's kind of all I'm, all I'm known for. That and and having a a dog. <laughs> so right now, all I'm doing is I'm locking in the basic shapes. You guys can kind of see here, uh, basic shapes for the arm and for the. Uh, for the bicep and tricep right there now keep in mind as I as I talked to you guys about this earlier that um, We're gonna talk about the different possible uh, the, the different positions of the arm another day So we'll talk about the arm extended um, and all of that stuff We'll talk about the arm bent right the arm twisted in, in uh, supination like this uh, and then we'll also talk about the arm raised and we'll do that on another day um, Just not today. So for those of you who are like case how do how about stuff like this? right how about stuff like this where the arm is raised um we're gonna cover these uh we're gonna cover these on another another day more more intensely because today is more of like a a general intro to arms and stuff okay i nail these intros too good yeah i'm i'm scripted out here <laughs> yo brandis thank you for the 17 sheesh that's insane 17 months thank you so much appreciate that um okay but let's let's talk about this arm real quick so as you guys can see i'm using some rough general shapes for the arms right um but let's kind of lock in that deltoid muscle that we've got right here so boom 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 deltoids right here and again the deltoids are going to be comprised of three parts right the lateral posterior and anterior side there of the arm and notice how it's really going to wrap around the forms right it's really going to create some of that shape there um I'm, I'm confused. I haven't noticed you stream Mondays too. Oh, yes, I do stream Mondays, guys. So my schedule, um, my, my commands are broken, but I do stream. Um, I stream Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 8 a.m. PST. So, um, yeah, we do a lot of all that stuff out here. And also, I do run ads on my stream every hour. Um, I do run ads on my stream every hour. And, yeah, um, if, 
if you do get an ad thank you again for sticking around for the ad break uh, but also um, if you don't want to see any ads consider subscribing or using a prime sub uh, but the ads do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do uh, what i'm doing out here on twitch so damn look at this look at the uh the the brachialis muscle on this guy sheesh what the heck this is like that's huge <laughs> it's crazy muscles are, are intense uh, what is the job of a character artist? So what's the responsibility of a character artist? So a character artist is another term for a character designer. Uh, the role of a character artist basically is to come up with ideas, explore different ideas and variations for character designs. Um, in an animation setting or a production setting, it's usually um, you'll get like a script for a character or an idea for a character. And it's your job to come up with, you know, variations and say, you know what? I think the character could look something like this, uh, in this hairstyle, wearing this outfit, um, that kind of stuff. And so I would say that's usually the job of a character artist. Um, it can vary. It can also be, um, it can be about helping the lead, the lead artist with, with turnarounds and more technical things like how to do, how does this character look like from different angles, right? Um, how does this character look like at different ages? Are they, how do they look when they're young versus when they're old? So I think, um, those are some of the primary, uh, jobs of a character, of a character artist. Um, some of the skills that I would say are really fundamental to being a character artist are one, having good 3D form, having a good understanding of uh, volume, and also having a good understanding of the anatomy, because at the end of the day, your job is to um, your job is to draw humans, right? Or variations of humans. It could be humanoid too. And so having a good understanding of the subject that you're working on can be really a good plus, and I would highly recommend it. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Tea Time. I appreciate you coming in, by the way. I know I was teasing you earlier. How do you apply for a job uh, without a degree in art? That's a good question. And I think the answer to that question is, thankfully speaking, uh, thankfully, um, the animation industry doesn't actually, I think personally, uh, doesn't really care too much about whether or not you have a degree in art. They care more about whether or not you have the skills that they're, that they're looking for. Right. So I think that as long as you're able to showcase that in your portfolio and the work that you do, um, I think that's really all that matters. Now there are going to be some challenges. I would say it's definitely not easy. I think having a degree can make it easier for you to be found, but if you don't have a degree, um, you definitely want to be proactive by either show it, showcasing your work and your capabilities on social media, whether that's platforms like Instagram, Reddit, LinkedIn, Twitter, and stuff like that. Um, but also going to conventions, going to workshops, all of those things, and, and being able to hopefully showcase your art there and portfolio reviews and stuff like that. Just making sure you're getting your name out there, I think is very uh, very important and, and a big part of networking, right? People always say, oh, networking. I hate networking. Um, but I actually think networking is, is fine. It's, it's, um, it's just a part of introducing yourself to other people and potentially even getting to meet the people that you'll be working with in the future. Right. Um, I think that oftentimes people think networking is kind of like some lame thing. It's like, well, what if like, why do I need to meet people? Why can't my skills be good enough? And it's like, well, because if, if you, if no one knows who you are, how will anyone know you have the skills necessary to do the job? Right. You get what I'm saying? Um, um, I see a lot of requirements that character designers must learn ZBrush, Maya and substance painter. I can understand that for 3d work, but I, I see that in 2d too. Why is that? Um, it's not a big requirement, but it's definitely a plus. Um, I think in, in 2d animation, it's not as big of a, of an ask. Um, it's more like, a, Oh, you know, these things that's great. Um, in 3d, if you're working for games like Riot um, or studios like riot and stuff like that, blizzard, man, if you know it, I mean, I think at this point, it's almost like a requirement. And, and part of the reason why is because sometimes it might be like, Hey, we want you to design a weapon real quick and throw on a weapon for this, or give it at us, give it to us at this angle and hand drawing it for something that's supposed to be highly rendered and highly realistic. It's just going to take you a lot of time. So 
Uh, for games and stuff, I think it's actually pretty common to know ZBrush. But for animation, not as much. If you know it, that's actually pretty good because then you can start doing... Um, you can start doing more three-dimensional forms easier, mock things up. And I think that's, you know, it's not a bad skill to have. Um, but I don't think it's as required in 2D animation. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe there are some studios that are like, no, we must, you know, we must really have the um, 3D. You must have 3D. But as far as I've seen um, in the major studios and stuff, I have not seen that. Um... Are you working from home or do you have a workplace? Um, there is a workplace, but I don't go to it because I, I'm allowed to work from home. So thankfully, I just stay at home. And yeah, I I enjoy that way more because then after my stream ends, I can go jump right into work instead of having to panic and, you know, do all of that stuff. All right, but there you go. We've got here this backside of the arm. Um, let me go ahead and color this one out for you guys. Uh, and then I think we'll be good for uh, for this one. We've we've knocked out a good amount today. I hope this has been helpful and not too overwhelming. Um, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. We we did a lot today. All right. So let me go ahead and color the. I'm gonna go ahead and color this one now on its own layer here. Oh no! Wait a minute. I'm. It's because I'm using. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna change the colors because. I realize I'm using some colors here, so I'm going to grayscale it. Okay. Whew. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead now and slap on some colors for this one. All right. So again, this is from the backside now that we're seeing the arm. And um, for those of you curious about how my boot camp is going to work, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over each of the components of the human body until we've basically gotten... Um, until we basically got in the full form, right? So we started off again, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, what we actually started off with was the head. So I told you guys about the structure of the head, the skeletal anatomy of the head, how the head connects to the neck. And eventually we worked our way into drawing the torso of the body, right? So we did a few of these torso drawings, both front view and back view. Um, and then, uh, now we're getting into the arms and then after the arms, we'll get into, um, We'll, we'll get into drawing hands, legs, and then feet. And then I think we'll be good for drawing the anatomy of the body. Um, you love my Joel drawing? Oh, yeah. Where did you see that? Was it this one? Yes, I did draw. Um, I drew Joel on uh, the one on the left side is my is my um, is my version of Joel. And the one on the right is uh, Joel Pedro Pascal version. So I drew these out. Yeah. Sheesh. Um, is Blender not an option knowing ZBrush is more requested skill? Oh, no, you can know Blender. Um, I think just having a th an understanding of 3D rendering and 3D modeling, um, 3D rendering or 3D modeling, I should say, um, is just an interesting good skill to have. But it doesn't have to be a specific program. Though I do know that some studios um, are very specific about programs, like Powerhouse, for example. Powerhouse loves Clip Studio. They were like, we only use Clip Studio. And I'm like, bro, okay, fine. I'll learn it. I'll learn it for the job. Uh, but now, you know, I kind of like Clip Studio too. I was mostly against Clip Studio because I'm lazy and I didn't want to learn a new program. Um, but honestly, Clip Studio is, is such a well-designed uh, software that it honestly feels not that different from any other digital program that's already out there. And... Um, very easy to pick up, I would say. Um, let's see here. Oh, thank you for the follow. Appreciate the follows today. 108, uh, Sifa, Yolo, uh, Mage Lee, or Maje Lee. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys are doing well today. What do you think about Krita? Is it used in the industry? I, I don't know. Actually, that's a, that's a good question. I don't know if it's used in the industry, to be, to be honest with you guys. Um, but it, I'm sure, I'm sure it might be, I'm sure it might be for maybe smaller studios and stuff, though. I think most larger studios are willing to pay the, the additional money to get more, uh, more of the standard, oh, wrong colors. I was wondering what happened there. Uh, more of the standard software and stuff, but I'm sure there are studios that use Krita. I'm, I'm sure you could find a studio out there. That either uses it or is okay with using it. You know what I'm saying? 
does your industry use any AI software? Um, not the studio I work at, but I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a studio out there that is like, you know what? I would rather, I would rather use AI than to hire, uh, hire, hire somebody to draw these things out for me. I'm sure. I, I got, I got no doubts that there is a studio out there right now as we speak that's like rubbing their hands and like, yeah, how many people, how many people can we replace with this new software? How much money can we save in particular? Uh, do you share these canvases day by day or one or, or all once finished? Um, I try to do them day by day if I can, but sometimes I'll do them after like a week or two weeks. I'll kind of send, I'll submit all of them and stuff to you guys. Um, but they are available to all my subscribers. So I'll show you guys really quick because I know there's a lot of new people here and stuff. Um, so first of all, on my Discord channel, guys, if you want to, you can grab today's worksheet, which is this one right here. Um, here is the worksheet that I did last stream on uh, Saturday. And then here's the cheat sheet that I made in 2022, which covers all the skeletal muscular anatomy of the arm. Highly recommend you guys download these. These are free to grab. Um, but if you are subscribed to my channel, check, take a look at this. All you, all you subscribers will actually get access to not only the, the completed worksheets that I do, but you'll also get the PDF, uh, the PSD version, which will have all the different layers and all the breakdowns. And then you'll also get access to all the cheat sheets that I make here. So there's this one right here, the fundamentals of form, uh, which I will eventually be turning into a digital art book. So all of those are available to my subscribers as well um, because I got rid of my Patreon and I want to reward you guys who subscribe and support my streams other than just, you know, uh, giving you guys ad free access or all, all that stuff. And um, again, I also tell you guys that like, you don't have to subscribe to my stream. Um, if you want access to the stuff that you just saw, all that I ask is you guys come out and watch my streams while I'm live um, because I always try to make my educational content as free and as accessible as possible. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would say if you want access to all those things offline, however, um, those are going to be only available to my subscribers on Twitch. So yeah. Um, and thank you for the follow today, guys. Everybody coming in here. Appreciate that. All right. Well, um, I think for this one, I've, I've tried to label it and color it in the same uh, colors that we've used and the diagrams here, but I think that's going to be knocking out all the muscles there. Pretty good. All right. So with that being said, uh, thank you again for those of you who came from YouTube. This is going to be the end of the YouTube video, but not the end of the Twitch stream. All right. Okay. But there you go. Um, so let me go ahead and put this one over here for everybody out here. We knocked out three of these today. Sheesh. Crazy. Oh, wow. Thanks for the follows, uh, Little Moon and Jaza. All right. So here's what we're going to do, guys. Now that we have all this completed, um, let us... Oh, let me give you guys some quick tips. All right. So don't go anywhere just yet. I'm going to give you guys some quick tips on how I draw these things more gesturally. So let's say, for example, you're like, hey, Sam, I'm learning all the anatomy and stuff, but what if I want to draw more, uh, draw arms more loosely, right? So an easy tip that I like to do when it comes to drawing arms, like let's say, let's, let's say we have this pose right here. Um, a quick kind of gestural tip is to actually kind of go in here and I'll show you guys these rhythms that I use. And I, I think I learned this a long time ago. Um, but like, let's just say you have here a general torso, right? So I'm just going to draw out a quick little torso here. Simplified torso uh, box, right? Let me move this away and put this here. Okay, there you go. So some cool things that you can do um, with the, with the arm and stuff is you can just use some nice rhythms, which will also simplify some of the anatomy, um, that we covered today, right? So let's do this. This is just, imagine this is a torso. I know it's kind of, uh, simplified here, but let me add in here the, the, the pecs, I guess. Okay. So here's some like cool motion. So usually what I like to do is for the arms, I like to give it a bit of a rhythm right here for the deltoid muscle. Then what I like to do is I like to tuck it in here. Um, either showcasing the bicep like this um, or the tricep, right? And then kind of wrapping it around, giving a contour there for the arm. And then here would be like, let's say the forearm there. So it's kind of like a quick little gestural technique that you can do. Just kind of finding the rhythms of the, um, of the arms there and kind of adding in these zigzags, right? These zigzag regions. Um, here we can do it instead. Let's, let's do the arm going up instead of going down, right? So let's say we have the, again, uh, the deltoid muscle going this way. 
adding a little bit of overlap there. This time we're going to be adding in the tricep muscle, right? Like so. Um, and then we're going to have here the, uh, so the tricep going like that. Then we'll add in here the rhythm of the arm. Adding in here now maybe the, the forearm going this way. So now you have here the arm going up instead of going down, right? And it kind of looks crazy, but so you have here kind of like that. And so you can kind of imagine here all the different ways that you can draw. Um, you can draw the arms going either up, going down, and just following some of these basic rhythms. And we'll do it on the other side as well. So you guys can kind of see. So here we'll have an arm going straight, right? So I'll have here the deltoid muscle, adding in a little bit of a curve here. Boom. Adding in a, adding in a pattern for it to go inward for the, uh, for the tucking in there of the deltoid. Uh, tricep muscle going down. Adding in here a little bit of a curve, like kind of like this zigzag pattern. Uh, for the forearm there and this is primarily going to be the ridge muscle on the outer side and then there you go You can kind of see here all these like basic arm positions that we've drawn just from following this rhythm of going boom Zigzag boom like that. Okay So deltoids triceps forearm um, You can go the other way inward. Um, you can go in here deltoid bicep Forearm like that, right? So this is going to be the bicep here which is the tricep. You get what I'm saying? It's kind of an easy gestural technique. I know it looks kind of crazy right now, but like once you see it, you're like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> we can do an arm. I don't know. Should I do, should I do more of these? This is help. Let me know in the chat. This is helpful to you guys. Um, I can do, I can do like a, I can do like one or two more here. Yeah. Yeah. Some call it the lightning bolt. Um, there's a lot of different names for it. So many, so many names. But again, this is like, this is what I would cover. This is what I would say is like more important to know is once you understand the anatomy, right? Once you understand all the basic forms and stuff, learning about the, um, learning about these simplified shapes and being able to convert these shapes, I feel like is going to be the real secret sauce here. Um, I kind of feel bad now because I feel like the YouTube people are missing out, but Hey, you know what? That is why. That is why people should check out my live streams, right, chat? See, guys, if you, hey, when this YouTube video comes out, I want you guys to leave a comment on the video and be like, yo, you guys missed out on the post credit scene. You should have stayed for the credits. You didn't even get to see the, the, the new reveal for the movie. That's what you guys should do, okay? Go, go to my YouTube channel and then leave some comments on my video, my newest video. Be like, hey, there's more. There's more on the, there's more on the Twitch stream. <laughs> He's keeping secrets from you guys. <laughs> gaslighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're encouraging some uh, some gaslighting here, okay? This is the only time where I'm encouraging a little bit of gaslighting. Okay, but let's go do one from back view. I think this will be interesting too. So here's some, yeah, some some JoJo, JoJo poses, punching and all that stuff. Um, and let me draw some like contours so that way it's not like super crazy looking. Okay. All right. We'll go do some, uh, we'll do some more. All right. Um, uh, oh, the reason why this technique also works really well, uh, really well too, by the way, guys, is that this, this technique basically is a way that you can simplify the arm as a, as a chain link. Oh, hold on. Oh, I actually think, okay. On my portfolio, I think it's still in my portfolio, but let me see. Um, let me show you guys really quick. Hopefully it's still here. Um, so in my portfolio, you guys can actually grab this image right here, uh, where I actually did a tutorial on how to draw arms from gesture lines, simple forms, complex forms, dynamic lines, anatomy, and all of that stuff. I totally forgot I had this. I actually made this a long time ago when I was sponsored by DeviantArt and they commissioned me to do a tutorial actually on how to draw arms. So that's funny. Uh, I forgot I did this, but you guys can go to my portfolio and um, grab that, grab that sheet right there. That one should actually be really helpful. Okay. But let's go do some quick ones really quick. All right. I'm going to do another torso for you guys. Um, covering some of these gestural techniques here that I, that I showed you. 
This is the real secret sauce. But the reason, guys, look, the reason why I didn't want to show you guys this at the beginning was because, again, I want you guys to understand to get to this level where you can really understand all these simplified gestural techniques, I think it's actually really valuable to understand the anatomy and understand why uh, why this technique works in the first place, right? Because I think part of the problem that I struggled with when I was younger and I was, you know, trying to copy all these other artists and tutorials and I would copy the anime style, for example, is that the anime style is simplified, right? It is a, it is a, um, a style that is generated out of understanding the anatomy and then being able to represent the, the, the form and all that stuff in a bit of a simpler style. So, it's almost like you're you're getting the watered down version of the technique as opposed to actually learning how the um, how the the structures work and why they do what they do. Does that does that make any sense? So this is why I kept this a secret for <laughs> until later because I wanted to show it after first and then and then afterwards we can do stuff like all right, let's do some quick poses, right? So here look at this. An arm. Boom. See that? Yeah, most most manga artists will know the realistic forms. Um, it's it's more it's more about just the product of the of the industry where you have to simplify some things. But I would say um, knowing the knowing the anatomy and all that stuff is actually just like uh, I would say a, a good requirement, a good baseline to be able to then stylize it and make whatever designs you want to you know make. So let's go do some more. Let's go do another arm here. Maybe the arm now is going forward instead of going uh, bending this way. Right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of perspective here. I know that's scary, the F word. Um, but let's go do one kind of going this way, like that, right? We're gonna do the, the tricep going in like this. Okay. So here's like another another version here of that arm going this way, like that, right? So arms are just going in and out and all of these crazy forms here like this. Let's go do another one. Maybe this arm now is going to go uh, this way, right? This one's actually wrong. Should be going like this. And there you go. You can kind of start seeing here how having um, having those arms here. I'll do one arm, one more where it's tucking in back now like this, right? You can kind of see here how just adding in these simplified shapes can really give you the idea of the arm, right? The idea of the structure and the idea of the gesture and and all of that stuff there. Let me clean this one up a little bit more. Ta-da! Arms. Arms and shoulders and, and all that stuff. All right. Um, am I drawing forearms, Ben 10? No, no, no. I'm just showing you guys the different range of motion. I know it looks confusing. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know why I did it this way, but I wanted to show you guys the different range of motion that you can do for the arm and how using this kind of gestural technique that I'm showing you guys is actually super OP. Uh, when it comes to just kind of quickly understanding how the arm works and getting some nice gestures in there, you know, without having to commit to too much, uh, too much lines and all that stuff, right? What is going on? It's just the, is the internet crashing today, guys? Is, is today the, the dawn of the internet?